was a California August in 82 When my mother gave birth to the Spam Tech crew 13 years later had me looking at Linux Programming made me stronger like Papa the Spinach Now, people know that a DG carry weapons But if that weapon is a nest, you step in, we finish Contra With only one life, finish Metal Gear 2, use it only a knife Right, people might think that we're fronting Then they see all the noobs online that I'm putting My rhymes flow just like my code, even though my source is owned by Sco. What about my Indian? I keep it low. See me on Gunbound, call me pro. I'm a certified legend, but I'm still your bro. This is a PSA, boy. The more you know, no. I'm a legend everywhere that I go. Every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo. Can't get enough of Whitey Crackers jams, and they can't get enough of Whitey Crackers spam. I'm a legend everywhere that I go. Every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo. Can't get enough of Whitey Crackers jams, and they can't get enough of Whitey Crackers spam. I said my heart's Wide open goatsy, and my windows men like Ho Chi. I'm just another nerd, but I rap about it. Shit talk on the net, then I laugh about it. I've been caught slipping like the Star Wars kid when I'm on eBay sniping a bid. Catch me on a webcam like Numa Numa. See me at the club, and I'm rocking Puma. Another net legend if you see me yodel. Spit a little something that's anecdotal. Tell me about the time the E-bombs world Stole your chop like I stole your girl Catch me on Gen May, not something awful Low tax would ban me, rawful, rawful I'm a certified legend, but I'm still your bro This is a PSA, boy, the more you know I'm no. a legend everywhere that I go Every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo Can't get enough of Whitey Crackers jams And they can't get enough of Whitey Crackers spam I'm a legend everywhere that I go Every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo Can't get enough of Whitey Crackers jams And they can't get enough of Whitey Crackers spam yeah. I'm a legend everywhere Everywhere that I go, every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo. Can't get enough of Whitey Crackers jams and they can't get enough of Whitey Crackers spam. I'm a legend everywhere that I go, every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo. Can't get enough of Whitey Crackers jams and they can't get enough of Whitey Crackers spams, yeah. What's up, me bags? It's the often imitated, never duplicated, Frog Tony DGD, the chosen one of Comicscape. Thanks, ranked Miller out, Tony in, as we say around these parts. Oh, man, we got a lot to go over. We got to go over so much. Uh, we got to talk about Hex Allen's book, uh, Nephilim Squadron. Uh, I've been sitting on this one for quite a while. Uh, and, you know, after I reviewed... Uh, Larry's book, uh, we we um, kind of pulled back a little. It took a long on, hiatus from that. <laughs> on the reviewing, uh, I reevaluated my approach. You know, I want to give honest, real criticism, but I want to make sure that it's not mean, right? I don't want to be mean. I want to be helpful. I want to be. Uh, you don't want to sound mean. Yeah, you you want to stick the landing properly. You know, just to get the message across. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm able to do that tonight. Wilbur says everyone should talk about Hex Allen's book. Should they? Is this part of being drama free? It is. It is part of being drama free. Uh, we got to talk about some Frogman stuff. Uh, we got some images to show off. Some cool little uh, concept art. Now, if you ain't here, you're not going to uh, get all the nice concept art. Yeah, but who were you chosen by? Uh, Aaron sent me the same gif of uh, CM Punk <laughs> telling that to... Um, what's his name? Fucking British wrestler. Oh. 
Either way, God, God chose me. One inch. God. Uh, I'm also seeking uh, to talk less mean, uh, but to myself. You really should, wizard. Don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, don't want to be mean, but in what culture? In my culture, unless you're questioning someone's sexuality, you're too nice. Done. Yeah, Drew McIntyre, that's who it was. Yeah. Uh, Are they Scottish? Speaking <laughs> of Larry, through your fave is talking shit again, though. No, no, not that's homeless Larry. I'm talking about Niobe Larry. When we were, I reviewed Niobe Larry's Niobe book. Um, criticism wasn't received that well. Um, with some pushback on it. I think maybe I didn't um, express myself uh, accurately enough. Uh, says, Tony, for the love of God, if you have a concept art book, do not make the same mistake as Eric July and sell an eight-page book for 75. Make a four-page book for 150 instead. Yeah. Drew McIntyre is Scott. He's British, right? He's from the UK. That's what I said. Oh, yeah. It counts. Anyway. Through. No, it counts. Uh Plus, later on, uh, about an hour in, so about at, at 9 o'clock my time, 10 o'clock his time, uh, John's Longbox is going to come in. He's going to talk to us about his upcoming comic, Heroic Tales. And um, I'm really excited to talk to John because John, uh, he is a avid comic book collector. Plus, his Heroic Tales is very similar in approach to our own comic. He's going to have a main story, a backup story. He wants it to be a more family-friendly comic. He wants it to be something everyone can enjoy. Called back to so, the classics. You know, I think I think we're on the same page as far as what we're trying to create. Now, so it'll be interesting to uh, sit down and talk to him about that. Uh, it says, or add a bundle with a head sketch and sell it for a hundred, like Red Rooster. Mm, all right. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen. And the first thing I want to do is, uh, I guess we're going to do a little drama. Let's, uh, just a little, just a little drama. Okay. Drama light. Drama light. Because th this is one of those things, right? Oh, of course. Again, Her. It's, it's always Vicky. It's always Vicky. Uh, Vicky said that my shit was lazy, which is true, but bandwagoning, EFAPs, right? I've jumped on the Eric line. Bandwagon. I said, Rick, Vicky, you're wrong. You're wrong on so many levels. I was the original Eric July the Tracker on YouTube. It's my bandwagon. Others jumped on. Right? I started the trend. Vicky says, bullshit. Bullshit. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm doing a sturgeon. I'm going to read all my tweets. And I said, you can scream that, uh, that all you want, but it doesn't make it true. I was the guy calling out Eric's bullshit while others were turning a blind eye. 100% accurate. Uh, so Vicky put up this. I said, uh-huh. She put up this little, uh, look at how not to handle overpriced comics featuring Eric July. Oh, that's great, Vicky, except for comic dude just comes in out of nowhere with the fucking steel chair right to Vicky's head. Uh, Tony's first video was on July 14, 2022. Sorry, Vicky. You're wrong. Uh, and even that's not accurate because the first Eric July video that I did was in December of 2021 in which I talked about Eric's take on tokenism. And all that nice stuff. But that I think that's the first way rip before of this uh, yeah. video, right? So this guy, Matt Plastique, says, uh, okay, so I went through Tony's channel and it's legit, but also seems to be his pretty much first video about comic books. In fact, July 14th appears to be when he became a lifelong comic fan. Before that, it's all surface level quartering and G and G recycles. Guys. Apparently, according to Matt Plastique here, if you, you have a YouTube channel and on that channel you do not have a video on a specific topic, that means you have zero interest in that topic ever. Okay, Because according to him, July 14th, when that um, video went out uh, on the Ripperverse, uh, that, that's when I just, you know, decided that I was a lifelong comic fan. It wasn't actually being a lifelong comic fan. It wasn't having, um, was it like 35 uh, short boxes? Uh, four long boxes, a whole bunch of uh, just random boxes that we put comics in. No, no, no. None of that. You know, it's not walking to the comic book shop every week with my father and brother uh, picking up the new issues. No. Uh, apparently, when I decided to critique Eric July, that's when I became a lifelong comic. It says, uh, Tony criticized Eric in the, uh, in the December 9th, 2021 video about Eric July and tokenism, 
The initial initial assertion was that Tony was detracting Eric July earlier than others. He talks about comics in that video. He may not have a lot of videos on comics, but he knows about some comics. Yes, I am a huge Marvel enthusiast. Uh, I don't know a lot about DC, you know, a little bit. I don't know a lot about Image and Dark Horse, IDW, Iconic Comics, right? Uh, I know of a lot of the indies, but I don't know them uh, that well. But I am a huge Marvel comic nerd because that's what I read. That's what my, my father read. Uh, and if you go back in my channel, anytime we talk about a, a Marvel movie or a TV show or a, a video game with Marvel, my Marvel knowledge is very apparent. I go into deep lore. I talk about things that others don't know about. Uh, people are like, oh, I didn't even hear about that character. I had no idea that that, that would happen in his uh, comic run. So don't question my comic knowledge is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, For Cannon's Sake is coming back in April. Uh, we'll do like 15-ish shows. Hey. Hell yeah. Hail Clipper. We will win <laughs> Uh, are the short boxes like wearing a helmet or are they yellow bus theme? Uh, both. Both. Uh, all right. Now that we got 50 here, I can share this with all of you guys. I want you to look at some concept art uh, of this very sexy lady. Can't tell you who. I had to block out the name because there's a concept art for the name that goes along with this character and goes along. This is part of the fake ad. I can't tell you this is going to be the character that's featured in the fake ad. Uh, we scroll down, and you get a little little hint as to what the fake ad might be about and what's going on. Uh, those of you who know, if you know, you know, and you can figure all of this out just from this little image right here. I think it's looking good. This is John Wong's work. Uh, so, like I said, we, we went out. We contacted uh, the best of the best. Of the best with honors, right? Well, John nice. Wong drew the straight beats. Yeah. Right. So, like I said, the fake ad is being drawn up by John Wong. Uh, we got the backup story, which is being done by a CG artist. Uh, we're keeping that under wraps until we get closer. I'm going to show off some concept art. I'm going to show off some uh, images when we get them. Uh, but I'm going to keep the name. Uh, a secret because it's going to be special when, when we announce it. We'll probably have uh, try to get the person on to talk about it. Uh, what's up, Dan Lawless? He says art looks very nice. Thanks. Thanks. And uh, TJ Laser is doing the Gar of Pangea story, and then Finbar Saunders obviously doing the main story of uh, the Fabulous Frogman. Uh, and everything right now is going well. I have the outline for. The main story, the fake ad, the Gar, one page of issue two. So issue two is about 90% scripted. Uh, not scripted, uh, plotted, right? Because uh, usually what I do is I think of the story, right? This is my process. Everyone's going to get a little, little hint about my process, a little idea. So what I do is I think of what the story is I want to tell. And then I go, okay, this is where it's going to start. This is where it's going to end. I get the ending and the beginning all set. And I go, okay, how many pages do I got? And I, I write down numbers from one to whatever, right? So one to 26, put the ending in, put the beginning. And then I go page by page and I go, what do I want to tell on each page, right? So what is it that I'm trying to tell on page two? What information am I trying to tell on page three? And I put a little note. Right. So I get it all plotted out, all 26 pages, page by page, what information I'm going to uh, share on that page. So it, it could be as simple as, all right, page 10, uh, he fights X character. Page 11, fight continues. Page 3, fight finishes, uh, Frogman wins, right? So I know in those three pages, fight scene. And then later on, I'll go back and I'll plot out, I'll script out each page individually. So that way it flows very nicely and everything goes and then if I need to adjust if I need to go okay that I need that a little longer so I'll bump that page down or I'll you know we don't need that I can take that out so it makes it real easy on me um, obviously this was not the way I did the first uh, issue because the first issue I just kind of threw things at the wall 
at first. And I was like, oh, that's not working. Like that, that, that way of writing is not going to work for this for a comic book. I'll try to go back. Uh, does Frogman have super jumping ability? He does. He does, in fact. Uh, like I said, all of his abilities, his powers within the first three pages, you're going to know basically everything. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'm holding back, uh, but they're not really integral to the story. Uh, Dan Lawless taught me something invaluable. You can use your iPhone as an HD webcam. <laughs> uh, Tony, does Frogman have a secret identity? Yeah, he does. Uh, Freddie Foster is his secret identity, his human identity. His human uh, form, yeah. Is his um, superhero form. Uh, Wizard says, I write the story plays in my mind. Uh, with the pirate comic, I did that, uh, then went in and did it as page by page, panel by panel script. Interesting, interesting. Uh, will Eric July be a Frogman villain? No, no. But there is a nod to Eric July in the comic. Now, there's, there's a inside baseball. I try to keep it to a minimum, but there is some inside baseball in the comic. Uh, so if you know, you know. Uh, all right. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it uh who did this art? TJ. Oh, this is our good friend Zombie Boy. Zombie Boy, that's right. Yeah, he made the yeah. fan art of our very own Gar of Pangea. Even got the axe, oh. right? Yeah, we gotta get Zombie Boy. I should have just zoomed in on, on the um the signature. Yeah, signature, yeah. <laughs> we definitely gotta get Zombie Boy uh to do something for the second book. Uh, I love his art. I love his. It's got a style. Yeah. I would almost uh, the way it is and the way it's framed. It's like almost perfect for a trading card. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I like the way his hand is reaching out to the screen. It's a yeah. Jack Kirby throw. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe we just might reach out to Zombie Boy because uh, we need some perks, right? We're definitely going to need some perks uh, for the comic. Uh, if we hit goals, stretch goals, and I'm thinking what what they should be. Um, I was considering like a um, little mini poster. Uh, you know, cards are always a, a good thing. So I was thinking uh, maybe, maybe we get Zombie Boy to do uh, a card set. Uh, I definitely gotta I gotta reach out to uh, RJ and, and um, George and see you know how to even get that done to get it even made. Uh oh, the way things are panning out for me, you might need to get Zombie Boy to do the second book. No, 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 don't, don't even say that, Finbar. Don't say that. I got to do the actual gar at some point and have a Harlem art and an idea for a detractor. <laughs> Love the fan art. Keep it coming. Keep the excitement going. And speaking of fan art, this isn't fan art, but this is. Um, I should be working on other things, but I'm wasting my time doing this uh, to piss Tony off. As always the case. <laughs> As always the case. Look at that. I promised you guys that I would complete this drawing, and I did it. So not just a robot arm, but it's a whole robot. The whole robot. Yeah. Whole robot. I like it. I like it. Uh, we might... Um, we might incorporate this into the comic. Uh, yeah, you'll see me every now and then. I just grab any idea for what a jobber would look like in this world and make Frogman, fun, you know, have a fight with it. So that eventually it will be in the, uh, the comics later. Uh, TJ just gets bored, and we got we got to send them things in order for him to um, keep his time occupied. Uh, I love it, says uh, Young Clipper. Uh, he's one of the old Frogman robot goons, same color scheme. Might be. Oh, uh, Finbar, Finbar got the connection. <laughs> Might be. But See, this, yeah, is, this is what I talk about, guys. I, I was talking about this yesterday, how my artist keep trying to write the comic book for me. Guys, guys, I love you. I love you. <laughs> 
But anyway, the idea is to just showcase the direction the Frogman is going, right? We're going more yeah. for more drama. Yeah, it's a funny it's a funny character and all, but he's but he's able to you know, he's able to be in epic situations such as this. So this is what you you guys should be looking forward to. Uh, all right. All the happy stuff is over. Now it's time uh, to be mean, I guess. I don't want to be mean. Oh, wait. There's uh, one more thing I want to showcase. Thank so, God. Before we, before we get mean, right? Yeah. It's another challenge uh, Wizard of Wordplay gave me. Uh, boy, it was a challenge, let me tell you. Hold on. Uh, one inch says, need an issue where Frogman stops a certain somebody from getting a lap dance from the Little Mermaid. <laughs> uh, Tommy Tellerico. All right, what do we got so, here, TJ? So wait, let me show you the before of this. So this is a character uh, Wizard of Wordplay came up with called the Blasphemer. And the idea is he's a scientist who found this eldritch being under the sea. You know, a typical under Lovecraftian. The yeah. And then he gained these powers to summon these ghost tentacle thingies. I didn't I know, know what this to is do going. in the beginning. Ghost yeah, tentacles, right? huh? The problem is you can immediately see the connection between him and uh, Rasputin and Hellboy. So I had to find uh, workarounds with him. And this was the result. I made him more like a professor. And now he has the ability to turn people into these uh, fish beings. The f he actually find this is a normal fish, an eldritch fish. <laughs> and he's actually in the ocean when he uh, opens the portal. You, you, you can't keep giving away the good ideas to, to people like Wizard. Says, no, it's like we're... It. Here's the thing, right? This is And this will come later on. They'll bring this up when uh, John comes along. This is why I keep getting frustrated with all these uh, idiots who keep saying, this is a ripoff of this and this is a ripoff of that. It's not about whether it's a ripoff or not. It's about what you do with it. It's about the ideas you can generate from w what you want to work with, right? That's why I like actually want to. For the Ark of the Covenant, and his face is about to melt. It looks like a Nazi, is what um, Finbar is saying. Oh yeah, with the trench coat, right? And because uh, yeah. I wanted to go for the professor look, and then he's always, you know, you can imagine him walking around in secret, pulling up on people before he turns them into these little fish minions. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, and this is where I'm going to critique TJ's art, and yeah. the right in the right upper right. Uh, I don't think his his coat would have did that. Uh, so you see oh, how yeah. it squared off on the left? It should have curved in with the arm. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of more folds, I guess, needed to be there. But there you go. We'll get more fish like in each appearance. He'll look like Davy Jones by the end. <laughs> TJ Laser, it's already too late. I already caught you. He said that's Abe Sapien. Uh, it doesn't look any. Oh, like the um, because of the colors, right? Yeah. Well, I wanted to go for aquatic being the because you see the. Old, I wanted to work around colors like these, right? But later on, I mean, if this guy was going to become official, I would change the colors, sure, just so that we could get away from Abe Sapien. But yeah. Well, first off, we would have to change everything just to get away from Wizard and him suing us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's always that, <laughs> right? We're not taking this character. I'm just saying, you know, it was a challenge Wizard gave me, and this was the result. Sure, sure. And, uh, we already showed this. This is a uh, discarded panel, let's say, of Garo Pangea. Look at that. He's picking up his axe. I like that. You're never going to see this in the comic book. <laughs> uh, Sleeve, Slevin uh, Colvera, two dollars says Sturge's secret identity is renowned to zero. LG is gay. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't have a secret same. identity. He's just gay. Uh, thank you for the two dollars. And we already showed this. 
Oh, I wanted right, to I show this. Oh, okay. We need second. to play the music. All right. I gotta play the man. I gotta give the man what he paid for. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. All right, before you get into that, let me address this. He says, uh, Sturgis keeps saying your frogman has the same powers as Marvel's frogman. I'm pretty sure Marvel's Frogman is a guy in a suit with no powers, meaning Sturgis is one of the tourists he hates. Uh, Marvel's Frogman, which also um, goes by the name Leapfrog, uh, I believe in the comics, the original Frogman, eventually his son takes over the suit um, at one point. Uh, it is a suit. It is a suit, and I think it has um, hydraulics that allows him to leap. Right, But he, doesn't, he has no powers. Yeah, our our Frogman is a normal... You know, young man who turns into a seven foot poison dart frog. Yeah. So first off, it's it's different in appearance because it's not a green frog, it's not a frog suit, it is a actual like ninja turtle style frog humanoid. Uh he doesn't have the same powers because yes, he can jump and yes, he has a tongue because he's a frog. Uh, but I don't think any of the frog characters have the um the hallucinogenic paralytic uh frog oil, right? And also, uh, the character's attitude. He's more heroic. He's a, a lot more goofy. And he's just all around fun. Uh, he's not a bad guy. Uh, he's a superhero. Uh, and like I said, the story, the characters, and everything else is completely different. Uh, that was like, Nerdette was like, oh, man, I, uh, I thought this was oh, going to be exactly was, like Cyber Frog. She was a detractor yeah. in the beginning, yeah. Hmm. And she thought the Octogator was a salamandroid, apparently. Yeah. He also says he ripped off the tongue from Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, if you this, make a again, frog character, media illiteracy. This is why every time, every time I have to bring this up. This is why these all these people are a bunch of failures and tourists. All of them. Well, it's not even tourists because look, if you made a character, if I say, okay, I'm gonna make a character based on um, a frog. He's gonna have a tongue. He's gonna be able to jump. He's gonna have a tongue, right? That that can uh, stick onto things and uh, reach out. Because that's what a frog has in real life, right? If I said, hey, you're going to make a, a character um, based on a buffalo, he's going to have horns, probably a shaggy head, right? Kind of be strong because buffalo are big, right? Hey, make a character on a rhino. It's going to have horns, probably going to run, be a bigger, heavier set character, right? It would make no sense to make a frog character and go, okay, but he doesn't have, he can't jump because I don't want him similar to other frogs and he can't have a tongue. Then then why did I make him a frog? I might as well make him a newt or, or uh some other lizard, right? At that point. Um, so and again, we gave it, him the hallucinogenic oil again. Like we gave him other traits. There are other mm -hmm. traits he has that uh, you haven't seen yet. We, we're obviously not going to share it yet, but I'm just saying. Mm. What's one interesting? Something about uh, admins? Can admins do what? What now? I have no clue. Thought you had to pay for memberships. You, you do, but um. I'm not oh, yeah. sure. Scully, Kermit can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what you want to do with the frog. I think Kermit can jump. I don't think he can jump like. We don't see him high. jump often, I guess. No, because he's, he's a fucking Muppet. It, the guy's got his hand up his ass. I mean, it's going to be hard Obviously. to make Kermit jump. But if you watch like <laughs> Muppet Babies or something, where like he's, he's a completely, um, you know, drawn animated character, he jumps. Buffalo character should have QAnon powers. <laughs> uh, Jan asked me to help him out with memberships. Oh, I think Jan wants you to donate membership so he can get one. Uh, he, he wants... Uh, it, so that's why we haven't gotten any Jan on questions in a while. Because he doesn't have a membership anymore. Uh, actually, he jumps in Muppet Treasure Island. There you go. Thank you, Wizard. Well, there you go. I saw a video where Kermit jumped... Off a roof. What are we looking at here? What the hell is this? This is from our good friend, Samurai Snowman. Uh, he's making a comic book. Hopefully it uh, becomes a thing. Look at that. Samurai Snowman. Gremlin it World. Gremlin World. Yeah. So these three characters are duking it out in an arcade, as you can see. He went crazy have, with what, the details. 
Yeah, what am I looking at here? Because this this is a horrific looking thing. This monstrosity over here. Yeah, see, he has a mouth on his chest. He has eyes all over the place almost. And he's killing Batman. I think, <laughs> yeah, this is a Batman looking character. But you can see he has a fang sticking out. That's uh, that's Samurai Snowman's MO. He likes making these crazy mashup characters. I'm, and this guy over Robo, here after... Well, hold, hold on. This is important. Yeah. Okay, because Get a Robo Shinwin says, I guess I will be doing another animation about a frog. If you're saying what I think you're saying, uh, we would be on, I would be so honored if you did um, some sort of animation for our frog. Uh, Kermit left out of danger in the original Muppet movie. That's right. That's right. Now go ahead, DJ. Now what are you saying? So our friend over here got messed up by the guy in the front, but he threw a katana through his chest. Look at that. Damn. Is that what it was? I, I saw that blade, and I was wondering where it came you didn't, from. Yeah, you wouldn't think. Uh, you'd think it was part of him, right? But no, it's clearly, you can see, like, he just <laughs> yanked it in there. Everybody's getting shanked over here. Yeah. Crazy scene. There, um, I'll show you the link to Samurai Snowman's... Uh, Twitter. He, he's very good with action scenes. I can tell. I can tell. All right, are we, are we ready to... Uh, tell us this? This is the last thing. Another Samurai Snowman character I decided to ink for him. You know, if we make this... If this is popular enough, girls will be cosplaying as this. <laughs> this is um, a girl wearing a shit. mask. Yeah. This is a big hood. The, the cotton, right? The, the fur, I mean. Her name is Goblin Hood. She's an Asian chick wearing this crazy looking mask. And then um, she has all these tattoos over here. Asymmetrical clothing. You can't have that in, in animation because it's too expensive. Then you're going to animate both sides. You can't just flip them. Oh, yeah. It will be a nightmare, right? Or in a fighting game. <laughs> That's how they did the original uh, He-Man. And uh, if you watch, there's one character that's actually asymmetrical. But they said, fuck it anyway. So when they flip him, he just has the thing on the wrong side. Right. I expect more cosplayers of this than Yaira. I do too. It is an right. interesting design. It looks fun. I appreciate the support. I, I appreciate you, your, your art. Uh, you have crazy designs. You have crazy ideas. Yeah, no negative TV. We're moving different until I get to Hex Allen's uh, comic. Uh oh, well, speaking of moving different, I guess this ends the segment. <laughs> All right. Uh, so before I, I get into the comic proper, uh, let's show off the campaign. All right. Uh, all right we got, actually, before we get to that, uh, Dan Clip is hitting us with $2. Have you heard of Riverman from Plastic Man? Uh, I have not. Now, like I said, I'm not really a big DC guy. Um, but it sounds weird. I, I would like when I hear Riverman, I would think he's like Hydro Man, like made out of the river. Or just like some like homeless guy that lives by the river in a van. And he's like, fucking, I'm Riverman. Um so you got to let me know. You got to let me know more about this character. All right, let me see. Um... Is this the character? Hopefully, this is the character that um, Young Clipper said to look up. So I Googled it real quick, and this is what I came up with. Is this it? Is this Riverman? Uh, you may find inspiration in it. So many forgotten DC owned characters from other older companies laying around. Well, So yeah, um, it looks almost like a, a creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, except it has ears. Pull up Mr. Mine. Mr. Mine is just a caterpillar. 
No, oh, okay, there's a different Riverman. Hold on. Apparently, there's two Rivermen. All right. Damn you, DC. Maybe it's this one that Clip is talking about. Uh, you know what? I hate fucking Microsoft Bing. Uh, let's try Google. And this this from the Quality Universe, apparently. Whatever that means. This one was fuck you and all these I hate ads. Everyone I hate fucking ads. Yeah, okay, this is the one that he was probably talking about. All right, because this one says it's from um, Plastic Man. Plastic Man issue twelve. Yeah. Okay, that was the wrong one. This is the correct one. Uh, River Man, stop with the fucking ends. Uh, is this weird looking creature here? Uh, secret identity, no hair. From the Quality Universe, Plastic Man number 12. Uh, River Man is a monster who attacked and killed workers in the South River Tunnel because he felt they were invading his territory. The FBI sent Plastic Man to investigate why the workers were disappearing, and his sidekick, Woozy Winks, followed him on the job. Right. So, yeah, so it sounds like a um, like a Namor S character, like, oh, you're invading the sea, but like a weird monstrosity. Interesting, interesting. Keep that in mind. All right. What are we looking at now? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, sorry for the derail, but this guy's a fun. No, it's not. Uh, we got plenty of time to spare. Yeah, he looks like a caterpillar, but according to the comics, he's a worm. It's like an inchworm. Uh, a river man wouldn't bank on it. Oh, wizard of wordplay. Living up oh, to the name. Silly. Silly. <laughs> All right. So this is on Fun My Comics. I will put the link. Uh, Nephilim Squadron. I uh, know this is the last chance. This is not the one I wanted. This is the one. This is the one that's linked on his um Twitter. This is the current campaign. It's your last chance. Uh, put the link in the chat. Uh, so it's Nephilim Squadron is a high-octane science fiction action comic book. This edition is a preview in grayscale for the upcoming color graphic novel. So far, he's made a... So it's supposed to be a 80-page graphic novel, but so far he's released 40 pages as an issue one. I have the digital version with the, with the sound effects where you like it sounds like you're flipping pages. It's pretty cool. Um, but you can get the grayscale version. And um, in my opinion, and this is my opinion only, uh, the grayscale version looks so much better. So much better. Um, there's something about the colors that they use. It's like um, when I, when I show panels, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's like, almost like a yeah. like a thick, oily oil paint type look. I'm not I'm not really fond of the colors, like the way they uh, colored it. Uh, all right. So as you can see, the characters, you got heroes, you got villains, you got natives, you got authority, you got wild cards. That's like 15 characters. That's a lot of fucking characters for me to keep track of. Okay. Um, and that is one of the issues with the comics. So I'm going to share the screen. I'm not going to go over all the pages, right? Because obviously um, that wouldn't be nice. Um, but we're going to go over some of them. Yeah, what the hell's going on? Who's damn people messaging me on my phone? All right, so this is the cover. Um, you hear that? You hear that little like? Oh, I like that. Oh yeah. You know, like well, with like digital comics, like you could do little things like that that um just improve the experience. And like, I like the fold, right? It yeah. makes it look like uh, you're really holding the comic. All right, so here's my first issue with the comic, right? We're presented with all this information, okay? Uh, it's finally the year 2778, and here we are on the colonized planet of Tamarin 12. Okay, right? That's fine. That's, okay, we're, we're so good. Far, so we're good. good. So far, yeah, so far, so good. Now, the one we're going to really, like, 
Centuries earlier, the Earth corporate colonies, ECC, charged uh, famed explorer and planetary survivor Zeno Tamarin and his research group with assessing the planet's fitness for long-term human occupation. After sending a series of probes and androids, the Tamarin group ultimately set boots to the ground on the planet. Okay, so you would think that's it, right? That's the end of the exposition. But oh no, yeah. more exposition, guys. Like the first four pages is exposition. Right. Oh, no. uh, uh, that first page would have sufficed. Uh, Tamarin determines this multi-climate body boasts a temperate air pressure. A vast array of unique minerals and seemingly manageable flora and fauna is declared suitable for human Tacwin life. Okay, so first off, I don't know what the fuck Tacwin is. So now you yeah. throw this word in without telling new, me. New nouns without explanation. Like in the first page, you explained exactly what you were saying. Mm. All right. So this, you should have had something where it's like uh, declared suitable for humans and then explain what a Tacwin is. Like so that being said, giant, like, giant um, monsters called Tacwins and or whatever. Like Wooster is saying, the character designs, I mean, the creature designs are nice. Right, we don't get much of this. Uh, this is nice here, but this, this is like the the only time you see this. And it says, and aside from the sickly sweet smell of unknown origin beneath the atmosphere, it's all right. No intelligent sentience detected. Of course, he was mistaken. Nevertheless, humanity arrived shortly thereafter, led by the Bahrani Mining Concern. Guys, we've learned about three different companies now: uh, the Tamarin Group. Uh, the Earth, something. What the hell was it called? See, I don't. I can't even remember from page to page. The, the Earth problem is, yeah, we got lost. Like if we stuck to what was given in the first page, and then these other details later on, you know, through dialogue and other events, we would learn them. It would be fine. But we're already being so, inundated with too much. Earth Colony concerns Tamron Group, Burhani Mining Concern, and accompanied by the Jellico Genetics. So now we have four different four fucking... factions. Factions that we have to keep track of, guys. Uh, arrived and settled here under the protection of the premier personal security firm, Karada Johnny. Five, five factions now, guys. And in tow were the worker class, adventurers, and floaters, uh, travelers, space gypsies. Okay. Um, so this, these, the the drawing looks nice. I like the pages. Um, I like the idea, though. That's. He's telling the story while showing what's going on, and it's like, it's almost like a big establishing shot, right? What's going on on this planet? Like the idea is sound, at least. And for me, because I read this and I was like, man, there's so much to take in just at the beginning, and, and it goes on. There's more and more uh, before eventually just telling you, hey, there's these giant monsters that are coming at the city, right? Yeah. yeah. This is all if you're if you're writing a novel, right? Uh, and this feels like novel writing, like almost a um, the prologue to a novel, right? Where like oh yeah, it sets that's you up, true. and then you go into the world. Like if this was a novel, I think it's fine, but it's comic book, right? It's a show don't tell medium, and I think we yeah. should have, like you said, we should have went in, boom, hit you hard, and then through dialogue you hear. And you learn about these things, right? Yeah, you because have to none be aware of, this... of the limitations of the comic book, right? As you're reading, because you're also you have to pay attention to both the visuals and the words. Yeah. Well, because when you're writing, when you're writing a comic book, a movie, uh, TV show, anything, whenever you're doing any sort of creative writing, right? There's there's important information, right? Necessary important information that needs to be in there, right? There's ancillary information. It's kind of like off to the side. You don't really need it, but it, it does enhance. And then there's unnecessary information. Okay. All of this, I understand that it's world building, it's lore, it's stuff. But however, when you read the story, none of this is a factor in the story. This is all unnecessary information, right? This is stuff that you, you could put in later, right? Or you like I was like saying, lore. yeah. Or this, you this learn is it the as stuff the like story goes on. Well, not just that. Like if you're you're playing a video game, right? You know how like you play a video game and you find like little like um, books or something, right? And you don't have to read them, but like oh, if you're interested oh, yeah. in the world, you read them and it has all this extra information that never comes into play. That's what this stuff is. The logs. Yeah. Yeah. Th these are like logs, logs that you don't need to know. So it, it's like wasted pages. 
Okay. I'm gonna start or you bump something. into the factions one by one. All right, let me, let me skip ahead a little. Because like I said, I don't want to show every page. Um, so far, so good with the art, though. It looks nice. All right. So, all right. This is the... Um, so we're introduced to the idea that there's this planet, right? They, they discovered it. There's now a government set up. The Barani group now becomes the Barani Government Council because now there's another faction within a faction, right? And uh, basically, they're they're like evil dictators, right? So these bugs attack. Turns out the bugs are actually sentient, and they have uh, aliens inside of them. Like they're the native creatures of the planet. They they're smart. So you would think they're the good guys, then, right? So you got evil government. These guys are, are the natives. They're the good guys. They're not because they're, they're like not the Nephilim squadrons. Hmm. Yeah, they're revolutionaries, but they're not the good guys because we know that the name of the book is the Nephilim Squadron. They're obviously the good guys because they do come out later. Yeah. Right? So the Nephilim Squadron is the good guys, but you've made me feel sympathetic for these guys because, they're again, they're attacking a, a, a hostile government that has infiltrated their world and, and stripping it uh, of all of its resources. Right? But... The way it's played out, it doesn't make anyone seem like a good guy. Like, I'm not rooting for anybody as I'm reading this book, okay? So here, here is the introduction of the Nephilim Squadron. And here's, again, where I have issue with the comic. Let me share my screen. Because uh, we, we skipped ahead several pages. Okay. Um, I think, okay, John has just popped in, but uh, let me... He's setting up his mic and everything. Hold on. Okay. So um, you've introduced the characters here, right? Uh, Hex. Uh, this is not an introduction for a character. Showing a guy's eyes? I don't know who this is. I don't know him from Adam. Uh, this lady here, right? Because if you go to the next page, okay, when this lady's talking and this lady's talking, I actually thought they were the same person for a minute. Oh, they're different people. This yeah, is the lady from the previous. They, they have different faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was confused. Um, like I said, uh, it is like a thick sort of uh, coloring. It is uh, not bad, but not great. Uh, Lieutenant Jason Nil uh, is the cocky flyboy um, that. Uh, he goes out and he, he um, stops his ship so that another like alien ship can come and he kills it and they're like you're gonna get reprimanded from from the boss. Uh, so they're all jerks, basically. The Nephilim Squadron they're gonna go on the planet and party and get drunk and pick up chicks. Yeah, the entire premise is uh, this is uh, what would happen if Quentin Tarantino directed Star Trek. <laughs> they're they're all like uh, somehow you know Tarantino characters, which is interesting. John was here for a second, but oh, they lost John. Well, because uh, it says device is not connected. I think he's trying to use his camera, and it's not uh, picking it up. So it's saying device is not connected and not allowing him to come on. Um, but um, all right, so eventually the uh, mayor's not the mayor, the um, like the president's son is being chased around the city by one of the aliens. And his bodyguard. Oh, John is saying he is having issues. He'll need to reboot. All right. His bodyguard gets naked to fight the alien with no explanation as to why. Character had clothes on, and then it just gets naked. Now, I have nothing against nudity, but it just felt unnecessary for the comic. Like, it didn't make any sense. Right? Uh, so that's weird. She gets so killed. A arms ripped of off. <laughs> yeah. Naked lady, arm ripped off. Um, again, we don't, uh, we got, so there's then humans. We find out that there's a human working with the aliens. So again, like, are the aliens the good guys? 
are the Nephilim squadron the good guys? Obviously, the evil government's not the good guys. Uh, so a lot of confusion as to what and who the good guys are. Uh, and there's so many characters that I uh, you can't identify with anybody, right? No, no single character is explored well enough that I can identify with or like or sort of want to see succeed, right? Because I have no idea what any of their goals are, what any of their, uh, you know, beliefs, how they feel, because there's like 15 characters that get introduced in these 40 pages. Boom, 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 character, 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 character. And need, none of them are explored like the, in any way. So wait, 15 members of the same squadron, right? No, because you get... You get uh, the characters in the government. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. I just never mind. Yeah, I remember now the the first page. Wait, you know what I'm saying you get uh, the government characters, like of five each members. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you get uh, the aliens. You get this other guy. Then, then the, the government people's, like uh, the planet, the, the home company, right? You get those people get introduced later in the book. Uh, See, I appreciate the creativity. It's almost um, Dune level creativity, right? With all the, the things that are happening, but. Maybe compress it a little bit. Just squadron versus one faction, and then leave it at that. Then that way you're dealing with less characters. And then the next story should be squadron bumps into another one. Uh, I mean, hopefully well, it ends up that way eventually. Yeah. What 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 he should have done is he should have focused. Okay, the main character in the squadron that he wants to focus on that's going to be the hero, the Luke Skywalker of the the squad, right? Focus on him. Show us him. Follow that character. Let us get introduced to him. Through him, we learn of the world and then build it upon there. Yes. No. It's not great. It's not great, but um, it's not terrible either, right? Well, the potential like is there. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of potential, we got John's long box, the uh, man who's doing heroic tales. What's up, John? Hey, how are you doing? Sorry about that. I don't know what was going on. My computer no, about slowly it. dying, and I've been on channels all day today i think i just overworked it <laughs> i don't know i had to reboot sorry everybody your computer seemed like it needed a break <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes so thank you thank you so what are we no talking about like what's going on well, what's going on first well, of all we were just finishing up thank you for inviting me yeah, no problem we were just finishing up going over hex allen's uh, comic book it's i've been sitting on it for so long i, I was supposed to review it like last year and i never got around to it yeah. Okay. So, so you are a, a lifelong comic fan. Yes. Um, yes. Awesome I, individual. Uh, I'm a comic book long time. Uh, whatever. I just been reading comic. I I learned to read on comic books. Oh, you got my campaign up. Thank you. Uh, I'm, all, I'm already I'm on top of things. Yeah, you you're a pro. I just wanted to show uh, a a picture that I always show whatever whatever. I got to establish my comic book uh, credentials. Can you see that? That that is my comic book room. That's right behind me. That's that's my comic collection. So <laughs> you know, and everybody. Yeah, like, Street. What? Yeah. <laughs> the reference to Ben Grimm. Yep. Yeah. Ben Grimm is my favorite. Superman and Ben Grimm are my two favorite. In in a perfect world, I'd be able to make a comic book with Ben Grimm and and the thing. So you know, whenever we talk about you like comics, I got I got to show that picture. So. uh I guess I'm going right into this. So I I started a YouTube channel about a year. Oh, Don Dan Lawless is in the chat. Oh, what an awesome guy he is. Great artist. Oh my god. I'm 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 fanboy gushing out. I just I just I'm stuttering right now. <laughs> the legend I, himself. Yeah. Dan is watching. Oh my god, I gotta sit up straight. Dan's watching. Dan's watching. <laughs> but uh I, I started a YouTube channel during COVID. You know, everybody's sitting in the house, everybody's you know, being reclusive and everything. And, and I'm an outgoing guy. I like to talk to people. I like to talk to people about comic books. So I started a YouTube channel where I, I talked about comic books and took me a couple of years. And next thing you know, uh, RJ from the fourth age decided he liked me. He brought me on his channel. We talked. And next thing you know, I'm talking to other people. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I can make a comic book, you know? So I, I, I had a couple of scripts written forever since I was a kid and I rewrote them. I updated them. And then uh, I said, I'm, who, who, who can I get to, to do? And I, I saw, I saw Renzo Rodriguez. I was like, I would love to work with him. To me, Renzo Rodriguez is the ultimate 
current superhero artist, you know? So I approached him. I was all nervous and he liked my idea. Next thing you know, we're working on a comic. And I naively thought that's all I had to do. I just have to hire an artist and I'm, and then I learned about computer formatting and, 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 and flatting and hiring a, a, a guy to take the, the, the artwork and actually put it into file. So I, I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, and I, I started to get you and me both, John. You and me both. Well, I, have no idea I, I didn't even know that was a step. That's how naive I was. I thought it was just, oh yeah, I'm gonna hire an artist. I'm gonna hire a colorist, and we got a comic book. Da, 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 da. You know, and then and then I realized, you know, it costs a lot of money. It's a lot of work. I I I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm sure I made every possible mistake you could make, you know, except for I hired Renzo and I hired Daniel and I hired Oscar, you know. So now I, I joke. But it's not a joke. I got the Avengers assembled and, and we got all the bugs out and we are making a phenomenal comic book. Jim, Jimmy got a question for me. He says, John, do you know that a box is slang for vagina? Yes. Jimmy Reyes, uh, I'm revoking your invitation to my channel. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> now, I look, At least Jimmy, he didn't ask you how long your box is, John. It's a long box. It's It can hold 350 something comics. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, so, uh, this, this comic is launching on the 26th. I, I'm, I know I'm in like full on, uh, motion mode. I apologize. No, that's uh, fine. That's what you're here for. You're here that's to, what we're here for. Me. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Uh, 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 you, you guys are, uh, you, you have your own comics coming out, right? I, I yeah. Assume, have, have you, have you did the self promotion tour yet? It's, no, it's not a, yet. We're still in the process of uh, getting. I'm, I'm going to have it all done and finished before we launch the. Uh, oh, good. Fun my comic Indiegogo. That that's good. That's good. I'm. We're about eighty percent done. We're about eighty percent done. We ju we just have two more pages from Renzo, two more pages from Ron, and then then we have to letter it and we're ready to go. So I'd say we're about eighty percent. But uh, you'll see when when you start doing the self you get a little embarrassed, right? You, talking about yourself, so. No, every, every Friday we talk about my comics, so I'm good okay. with talking about myself. Okay, that's good. And we I'm, appreciate I'm the enthusiasm <laughs> from you, John. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I get a little embarrassed. I, 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 I can talk I, about myself all day long, John. And, you know, <laughs> these guys got to stop me sometimes from talking oh, about myself. Okay. Well, that's good. That's it, it's it's funny that you said that because I was just talking and he said it's the hardest thing in the world to, to, to promote himself, you know. And, and I do think that comic book writing and comic book drawing is a solo activity you know like the the days of the marble bullpen they ended in the 50s you know so we're talking 70 years ago when when the guys all went to work and you know one guy's looking over another guy's shoulder and everybody's drawing and there's music playing you know now you know you see that picture of jack kirby sitting in a dungeon drawing you know don you're dan lawless you're the chat do do you do you draw in a group with people so i think a lot of uh i think a lot of uh comic book artists they have like this introverted nature you know so for tony if if, if you could talk about yourself i think you got a, a big step on everybody else you know I'm, I'm kind of extroverted i'll talk to everybody so but i still do get embarrassed being a, a self-salesman well look, uh, luckily for me i'm not an artist i'm a writer right me too i can't draw to save my life i i i, yeah. I gave up early on drawing i you, you hear that, guys? If if it if the world need to be saved and it was up to me and John to draw something in order yeah, to save doomed. it, y'all fucked. Y'all yeah. fucked. Yeah, learn learn to speak scroll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so a, I, they always say that writers are failed artists. <laughs> they have the ideas in their mind, but they can't put yeah, it on paper. This I, is where I the artist comes in. TJ Laser, Laser, do you do you draw? I, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with everybody. You know, I I can't possibly keep up with all the channels. Do you, do you draw do you either for the uh, for the comic book we're working on? I'm the inker. Oh, you're the inker. Yeah, okay. I do draw. Yeah. Okay, because I I gotta say I wanted to be a comic book artist and uh, I I can't do it and I don't want to say I settled for being a writer. I wanted to do it all myself. I wanted to be a Frank Miller, you know. But you know, I I could. Yeah. You, you, could, you could be. Right yeah, John Long. I could barely put two words together. Oh, <laughs> no. Just uh, uh, Dan Lawless got that channel. Just watch. I'll teach you how to draw step by step. Yeah, and he makes it look easy. And then I draw, and I, I'm ready to punch holes through the sheetrock. You know, I, 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 I can't do it. But uh, yeah, Jimmy, I, Jimmy, the other night, Jimmy goes, "All you got to do is look at objects and then break them down into their geometrical shape, and it's real simple." I'm like, "No, Jimmy, that's very complicated." What you just said, I can't do at all. It, it's you know, funny. Uh, 
I, I'm sure I, I know Dan has a copy of how to draw comics the Marvel way. I bought that book, you know, and I, I was like, now I know how to do it. You know, I'm going to buy the book. I'm going to read this. And by the time I'm done reading the book, I'll close the back cover and I'll be able to draw. No, nope, it didn't work. didn't take. Can't do it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm going to get a, because I said Renzo sketches. So, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I sent Finbar some sketches, uh, my artist. And uh, I'm so embarrassed of those sketches that he's not allowed to show anybody. Well, I'm, I'm showing. I'm, oh, I, I'm trying to see who I could show. Well, John is braver than you are, Tony. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Much braver because uh, my heart. Okay. This is issue two is going to feature Mary Sue. Look at that horrible picture. And the last page in Heroic Tales is going to be Renzo drawing. The, you know, I'm going to give a preview of the next issue. So you'll see what Renzo turns it i call renzo the alchemist because he te he takes my lumps of coal and turns them into a into gold yeah. well dan says i remember chucking my pencils across the room in those early days even, even dan uh, had some issues you always Look, start from somewhere <laughs> I, I will say i will say this john if, if it did come down to us saving the world by our art you would at least have a leg up on me because yours is way better than what i drew I, I find that hard to believe that anybody could draw worse than me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I always say my, my art looks like a, a mental patient uh, with no arms. Uh, could you could you scroll scroll down to the back cover? I, I you know talk about the, the art for a second. Yeah, so that's the that's the front cover by Renzo. This is a variant cover by Pat Broderick, and then this is the back cover. Now I I, I drew this out. And, and sent it to Renzo, and then he turned it into that. Now, just imagine my my crappy artwork, and look at that. I, I look at that, and even if the comic book doesn't come out, I'm like, I contributed to that. I contributed to that. And, and, and I will arrogantly say, in a healthy comic book industry, that page, that back cover of my comic would, would be celebrated. You know, how good it is that? It looks beautiful. Is, yeah. Isn't it? Daniel De Silva, uh, he he knocked the colors out of the park. He's the same colorist that's doing uh, Dave Brink's Perfect Ten, and and Renzo. Oh my god! Even Renzo is just like, oh my god, the colors are so good. You know, I I I I I would look at a poster of that, you know, and and hang that up. Is isn't that gorgeous? It's nice. It's I, nice. I don't know. I, I I I I can't believe I had anything to do with that. So I'm I'm so proud. And I I, I wonder also, if Renzo felt the same way after drawing it. Oh, Renzo. One there was one panel Tony gave me, and I ended up drawing it, and then I just ended up staring at it for hours. Isn't that cool? After. Yeah. So, this is, Jimmy I, says I, beautiful comic. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Coming from an artist like Jimmy, that is a that is great. You know, uh, yeah, I I I I, I love this. It, it, could could you just scroll up for a second for the first? I just want to make. Uh, I, I you know I'm full on a uh, sales mode. I'm, no, I just want to point out that is it, scroll up more. Uh, right, we going? To, to the first year, ten dollars. I just want to point out, yeah, I, I, I cannot in good conscience sell charge more than ten dollars. This, this is we're going to get a twenty-two page, fully drawn, fully colored by by Renzo and Daniel. So you already know the artwork is phenomenal. I'm writing the script. Then, then I'm going to have like a, a a letters page, but of course it's the first issue, so there's no letters. And then uh. I'm going to have a, 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 a seven issue, a seven page, excuse me, backup drawn by Ron Mosicki, who's also doing. Uh, uh, why can't I think of the name of his other comic that he's doing? 13. I'm sorry, Ron, you're going to kill me. And then Oscar Corretta is doing the color for that. That looks phenomenal, too. So that's 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 29 pages, a letters page. That's 30 pages. And then I have like ads. You'll I, I don't want to spoil the joke, but there's there's ads that you will all recognize, like spoofs on ads. So and then uh oh. John, John 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 have you been watching our channel? Because that's I, exactly I, what we're gonna have in, in my comic. I'm gonna have oh. a fake ad uh that's a spoof well, that comic shows we're all ads. in the same mindset right? well that we're shows that we all love classic comic books. comic books yes yeah uh may I ask how old you guys are? I'm, I'm 43 uh, okay. I'm 38 okay so you he, guys he's, he's a young, young kid but you, but you, you bought older comics, so you, you'll, 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 yeah. you'll laugh when you see it. It's fun, and uh, I, I already got one. One of the ads is completely finished, and I cannot stop looking at it. When, when the artist, I, uh, uh, Fabrizio Aiello, it did that page, 
And he, he said, is there anything you want me to fix? I said, fix. This is better than I had hoped for. This is outstanding. You know, everybody that's been contributing to this has been doing such good stuff. I, I'm, if I only make one comic book in my life, it, it is something that I'm going to be proud of. You know, I, I, I have 20 issues planned, you know, with no end in sight, God willing, but uh, this is so much fun. And I don't know what else to say. I, it's, I, I'm excited. Well, you got to give us the pitch. What's the elevator pitch? For okay. Heroic Tales? Uh, the, uh, well, Heroic Tales, the comic is the name of all it, it's, you know, it's it's like a Marvel premiere, so it'll it's about different superheroes. But the Patriarch is the world's most popular superhero. So how does he balance being a, a loving husband, a devoted father, and a superhero? You know, so he he's a full time superhero, and he just he just making the world safe because he's raising kids in this world. You know, I got tired of Marvel and DC taking craps on all the fathers out there, so I'm like, I want to make a superhero whose entire concept is that he's a dad, you know? So he's the patriarch. He's the dad. He's, he's like, he dresses in this costume to, to, to resemble like a Superman type, but he's nowhere near as powerful as Superman. But isn't that what your dad does? Your dad acts like Superman. Like you go to bed at night and you don't realize that your father's up worrying about the mortgage. Your father's worried about the boiler. Your dad's worried about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the car payments, you know what I mean? And then you wake up in the morning and it's Christmas or it's your birthday and everything's great, you know, and dad's smiling, you know what I mean? That that's what he is. So he's out fighting villains and he's not as powerful as he presents himself because he doesn't want the world to worry. He wants the world to know that I got this. I'm dad. You know, it's, it's, it's a tribute to all the fathers. Out there. Are you guys dads? Are you guys fathers? I, I'm a dad. I, I'm oh, a dad. TJ's a dad. Oh, good for you. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> The moment you talked about um, saying that he's hiding the weakness, so that, that he wants to show that he's more capable than uh, he really is, that, that gave me goosebumps because that's uh -huh. been my oh. life with my child. <laughs> well, Finbar says, oh, hold on, John, because Finbar says, why is John's idea sounding familiar to him? Uh oh, uh oh, am I getting my first lawsuit? Uh, no, no lawsuit, but we, we have the same sort of um, uh, mentality about what we're trying to create. Uh, we're doing a throwback to the Silver Age. It's going to be classic, fun superheroes. Not dark, not brooding, not this oh, modern. Oh, already. Take. What's the name of your comic? Uh, it's going to be Awesome Amphibian Adventures. And just like yours, it's going to feature a main story and then a backup story and then some little uh, fake ads and stuff. And oh, wow. Sounds good. Let, let, let me know when you're promoting it. Come on my comic. So while the uh, Patriarch is channel. your version of almost Superman, our Frogman is almost our version of Spider-Man. Okay. <laughs> it was described, I, I didn't intend this because, again, I'm a big Marvel guy, not DC so much, right? But I, I gave uh, Nerd Edge Newsstand, maybe you've heard of her, but I uh, gave her the script to look over and give me some feedback. She said it was like a combination of classic Spider Man and Shazam. That's the way um, she oh, felt the comic was written. I love Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, first off, he has one of the greatest comic book costumes of all time. Oh, not yeah. a wasted line on that comic on that costume. Oh my god! And I, real I, quick, I, I gotta I gotta get to this fifty dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Uh, yep. ANC presents says I can't wait to back and review this. It's such a good superhero art. Uh, will there will any hotties to cosplay be introduced in this issue one? Uh, good okay. luck, uh, Mint. Okay, so you want to see some hotties? Scroll down. Uh, give me one second to. Um, I gotta give these. Uh, I gotta give the people what they want, John. Now, we yeah, have a tradition music. here. <laughs> uh, we play a little music. Uh, we get everybody excited. When you uh, play music, you don't get in trouble. I'm, I I want to play music on my channel, but I, I I'm too much. Uh, we we have specific clips that um okay I okay. made just for uh purposes. Hmm. High risk, high reward, the economics matic part owner, oh lord, it's a ballsy move. Some people not matic sing my rap lats phonemics for payment, not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you forty percent, you're a cold matic gave you forty percent, you got a chance to get rich. I gave you forty percent, don't do no pop on the bluff. I gave you forty percent, so right now you get nothing. <laughs> oh shit. This uh, this presents dropping another fifty. Um says, my character Kinesis from an upcoming comic, Safety First, is more powerful than Superman, and he can beat everyone's character easily, uh, but he can't beat his son. That wouldn't be very daddy. 
Uh, I'm doing. I'm also doing Golden Age style comics. Good taste, boys. Uh, Clippa. Thanks, Riley. Thank you for the uh, fifty dollars. Appreciate it. Safety first is actually a good title for a comic. I'm surprised that it's not used already. You know, don't you don't you wonder when you hear something and you're like, oh my god, how is not 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 taken? Like I I, I don't know if you're familiar with Tonic Bowl. He has a comic called called Saving the World. How did nobody take that title before him? What a great name for a superhero comic, Saving the World. <laughs> it's a simple, simple effect. Yeah. You know what I mean? And effective, like, yeah. I was like, how did you? He goes, I know. He goes, I looked it up. Nobody had it. <laughs> uh, did you look up uh, your, your comic characters before you uh, started writing them, John? Or? I, I'm sorry. I missed it. I'm, I'm too busy laughing at my own jokes. <laughs> what did you say? I said, did you happen to look up your characters? Because I know I looked through trademarks uh, before I, I did yes, anything. Yes, yes. I, I, I look up all of the, the I, I looked up everything. And here's the funny thing. The title Heroic Tales was used twice before, and I missed it. And everything was in production. And, and one of my subscribers said, you know that there was a comic book in the 90s by Bill Williams called Heroic Tales? So I reached out to Bill Williams, and he was just like, yeah, you – not only do you have the, the title with my blessing, do you need a letterer? And now he's my letterer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, so let me put you know, this, uh, some music real quick. Sure. So here, you know, uh, in, in in my comic, it's set in, in in Science City, and Science City was the the architect Ian Strange is a wizard. So there's magic, you know. There's all all, all the stuff that you find in comic books. There's wizards. There's high tech. There's space aliens, you know. And uh, he designed the city, and the blueprint the, uh, the of of the city, the silhouette of the city is it's a magic symbol, and it's supposed to generate like utopia. But of course, the evil industrialist, you know, there's always an evil industrialist in a car. When he built the city, he used different materials. He changed some of the blueprint layouts. So the magic that is gathered is dispersed improperly. And people now dress up like villains and rob banks as 30s gangsters. You know what I mean? So this is Boss Moxie. He talks like, hey, I'm going to rob the banks, eh? And he gets super sexy uh, henchwomen. That's that's Gams, Doll, and, and, and Dame. You know, they... they They'll be they'll have their own trading cards with their stats on the back and boss moxie stats on the back. You know, they're gonna have measurements on the back or just stats? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah whatever stats you want, you know. I'm I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> so he, 36, you know, 24, 36. But only and I will say three, John. That, that <laughs> Charisma 18, if anybody plays D D. Mm -hmm. So uh it it the 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 Issue number three is is going to be that the patriarch teams up with uh, you know like a street level street fighter daredevil Batman kind of guy, and I will say that there will be one of the sexiest villains ever created. You know, a girl girl villain. So there, mm. there is, issue number two is going to feature a a, 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 a female character superhero. She, and Renzo can't wait to draw her. You know, he's finishing up this issue. He can't wait. He's like, I can't wait to draw a sexy Asian superhero girl. <laughs> so that's issue number two. So yes, you know, it's a comic book. There's, there's got to be sexy women. There's got to be, there's got to be fit men. There's got to be sexy women. And then around Always. issue eight, the, the, the main character is probably going to be a big fat slob who's like always eating. That's my self insert. So, yeah, oh. got to put myself in there somewhere. <laughs> you'll, so you'll I, was, I was looking over these um, images earlier. Uh, are these the final images for the comic, or obviously yes. the, the letter is not in there? The, no, the lettering. Uh, Renzo. I, I wanted to wait till Renzo was done. He's he's on the the second to last page. And then I want to redo the script because this this page in particular, I I think this was only supposed to have four panels and he put five. So I have to, I have to adjust some of the, you know, the captions stuff like that. So it's just a good excuse to give the script a, another once over, and then and then send it to the letter. I didn't. I got to be economical. I didn't want to pay for lettering twice. You know what I mean? Wizard says, "Oh no, we found problems." Yeah. So um, this this is the part where I, I don't want to be mean. Okay, uh, but I was looking at the art, John, and I think there's uh, quite some issues that maybe uh, you might not be aware of. Okay, so uh, let me bring it up. 
Yeah, I was like before the show. I was like, oh man, I don't want to like because it looks nice and it sounds great, but I was like, there's a couple of things in the art. Okay. That, uh, yeah, Tony has a microscopic eye. <laughs> you have yeah. to bear with it. <laughs> like you can see in the smoke here, um, there's like breaks in the the outline, the, uh, the black. Okay. So I don't know if that is that purposeful or is it? No. I'll take it to consideration. And then. Um, um, it was um, all right. So uh, a lot of your characters that are in the foreground have this uh, halo around the black. Uh, we've seen that in a couple other comics. In uh, George Gatz's, he was like, "That's because they didn't register the black right." Um, and you have that in the, uh, the comic where you can see like around. There's like an, there's almost a halo around a lot of the characters. Yeah. Oh, this white. And um, on some of the other pages, it's more pronounced. Okay. So, I mean, just, I mean, it's not bad art, but like I said, it's just something I noticed. It's I just think tiny, it's an easy fix. Yeah, easy fixes. Okay. Yeah, well, I talk to Renzo every Friday, so we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. Uh oh. Sorry, Renzo. I didn't mean to get you yelled at. You don't yell at Renzo. He's a saint. But other than that, I mean, like I said, it looks good. Uh, it looks interesting. Um, although I, I got issue with one thing, John. Because um, at my job, I, I am a safety guy, right? And um, this right here, John, would not hold up. Uh, you can't just I, snap back. You can't just snap back two pieces of metal. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a safety guy at a construction site. I'm a safety guy at a uh, manufacturing plant. Oh, okay. Okay. Because uh, you still got the line breaks. You just that's not safe. You can just push that right back open. Yeah, well, it's better than being wide open. <laughs> I'm just playing with you, John. Yeah. Just give you a hard time. Now I'm a, I'm a construction worker. Would you say safety guys to us? The fists go up and we get ready for fights. Oh my God. The safety guys make it so that we can't get the work done. You'll <laughs> <laughs> be like, fuck that frog prick. Yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, Zombie Boy says the art is so nice. It is. Thank you. Thank it you. It is, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky to have Renzo. Without Renzo, this project is DOA. Uh, John called Tony a ho ass N word. That's the appropriate response to go to <laughs> Me? I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I, I've adopted the what would Stan Lee do? You know what I mean? Okay, true believer. Sorry, next issue will be out of the park. You know what I mean? I, I, <laughs> that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Look, I, I'm 100% in the uh, belief that as soon as I put out images uh, for the comic, uh, we're going to get torn to shreds. I have no... Uh... Yeah, you got what you dish out, you know. It happens. So you, get, you got uh, add-ons, you got a, a coin... Is it two-sided coin or is it two coins? Two, two sides, both sides. One side says heroic tales. One side has the patriarch's laurel wreath symbol. Is there and, a um, backstory and, to the symbol, or is it just? It's victory. You know. Oh. The, you know he, he's a. You you know how men always think of the Roman Empire. So I'm trying to do everything possible that would like be you know he's patriarch. He's a man. He's always thinking of the Roman Empire. The, uh, the, uh, I, I've the, never thought about the Roman Empire, John. Uh, <laughs> Maybe well, not real man. I, this is going to sound awfully pretentious, but I, I, I have a degree in, 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 in ancient history, and I always wanted oh, to. Oh, okay, out. yeah. So that's Makes that's sense. you know when, when that whole meme came up. What, how often do you think of the Roman Empire? I was like yeah, every day. Like I'm, I'm buying books about the Roman Empire still all the time. To, and I, I, I'm fascinated. That's why he's purple and gold. He's dressed like Caesar. You know, this royal this, colors, yeah, yeah. The, Roman, the, the colors of, the, of Caesar were gold, and you know, so that's like a, a thing with him. He's into the Roman Empire, and you got the uh, heroic tales pint glass, pint you glass, drunk. you know, it's got the it's got the patriarch's laurel wreath on, on, on the side, you know, on one side, and it's got the uh, and then when Mary Sue comes out, it'll have her symbol on one side, she's she's the character for issue two, right, and then you got the goals. 
Right. Yeah. Six collectible three. cards. Yeah. Right. It's so gonna have, it's going to have their role playing stats on the back. So it's going to uh, have. Are the cards already done or are you waiting? Cards are already done. Players? Cards are so, already done. Uh, in in the unlikely event that you don't hit the um, 8K, 6K, let, let's say, you know, shoot the moon. Happen. Right? Yeah, shoot the moon. Yeah, of course. What I'm saying is like you have them done, but you don't hit the goals. Uh, oh, they're not printed yet. They're, they're not printed yet. Their their art is done. I paid for the yeah. Art. That's what I'm saying. The art is done. You paid for it. You have it. So I just don't have you cards just playing. you just you just sit on it and wait till the next campaign or I don't know. You know, I was uh, there's there's an eight page backup that was going to be a stretch goal. I got so excited, I just threw it in a comic. Who knows? <laughs> Shoot the moon. You know. I'm so confident that people are going to like it, that it's going to sell well, that I was like, why make this stretch goal? I, I, I'm too scared of uh, making people wait too long. And, you know, now we're like, oh, John's got a land kick. So, I mean, even even the backup's almost done. So it was supposed to be a stretch goal. I didn't want to wait until the campaign launched. and be like, okay, we're good enough. Let's start the backup. No, we're done. We're almost done. We just got to do some lettering. You know, uh, the cards just need to be printed. And, uh, you know, 10 bucks, man, you're going to get like a, a 35 page comic. You know what I mean? I think it's one of the best deals in a, in crowdfunding. Yeah, our comic's going to be 15 bucks. We're not as uh, cheap as John. John. John's much more forgiving than that me. 15. I'm going to charge the shit out of you guys. <laughs> how, how many pages? Uh, it's 32. Okay. A uh, stray bean said, "Has John thought about doing a live action trailer to promote the comic?" Yes, I have. I actually asked a few famous YouTube people to provide voices, but um, I, Luke Stone was saying that something like only like ten percent of people actually click on the trailers on on the Fund My Comic site. So I I just figured it was an expense that didn't pay for itself. There you are know, people I, who do three D animations that'll do it for free. Maybe you should look into that. Yeah. Oh, really? Free yeah. is a good price because because I got yeah, all the. I like free. Yeah, free is really good. Just for the sake of promoting, there's a lot of good people out here on YouTube. We we should utilize them more. <laughs> I take it you do 3D animation. <laughs> no, not me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I, I I you know I I laid out all the money and I'm a blue collar guy you know so I I I do have to consider costs and I really in good conscience couldn't. Couldn't say let's make a comic book worth more than top because this is all ages. I, I you know, I, you could read this with your kids. It's a, it's about family. It's about fathers. And I was like, you know, kids should be able to afford a comic book. And, and ten dollars was really as realistically as low as I could go. You know, I'm I'm not going to make people pay thirty five dollars for a comic book. You could call it a graphic novel all you want, but a comic book shouldn't be thirty five dollars right off the shelf. You know, so I'm confident enough that people are going to like it. You know. There's a six dollar digital option. I, I I look at this. I got a varied cover by oh, Pat nice. Project, a legend. You know, Pat Project was my very first obsessive comic book artist. You know, when when I was a little kid back in 1974, he was drawing Captain Marvel with a you know Drax the Destroyer flying around through Saturn. You know, and I I was obsessed with his artwork. And then then he went on to Firestorm and Captain Adam, and uh. You know, I was on a panel with Mike Barrett, and Mike Barrett just did Bronze Star, which Pat Broderick just drew. So I was like, "Oh wow, he's still active." You know, can I get him to do a cover? And Mike Barrett asked him for me, and there you go. You know, guys, guys, classy guy. He said he was going to do it by this date. He did it by that date. He was awesome. You know, I I, I can't believe if between that back cover and, and Pat Broderick artwork, I, I'm amazed. And I also have another variant cover, but I'm not going to show that yet. Because mm. when I'm done with my comic, I'm going to go to Kickstarter and I'm going to have a, an exclusive Kickstarter variant cover. And then I'm going to go to Indiegogo and I'm going to ex exclusive Indiegogo variant cover. All by, you know, famous comic book artists. Well, I know we got Jimmy Reyes in the chat. I think he said earlier if he had room for another cover. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. stepping up. Yeah. He's offering you a variant cover. That, that's hustling. Says, John, I'd, I'd be up for a cover if he had room. I knew, I knew there was a DM me. DM me. You know what I mean? I got to respect the hustle. You gotta respect the hustle. Always, always be hustling. I, I got, I got to get more hustle in me. You know, I, I, Tony, you said that you're, you're not embarrassed to push yourself. I, I, I get embarrassed selling myself. <laughs> you know, so I got to get better at this. 
Not going to lie. This looks good. Thank you, Finbar. Thank you. Yeah, Thank Finbar you. is my artist. Uh, oh, he is. He's trying, our trying. penciler, yeah. Oh, cool. And you're the inker, TJ. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank, thank you, I'm Finbar. the guy that cracks the whip. Coming from an artist, that means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. He's not much of an artist. It's not much of a company. Yeah, maybe, maybe I could get somebody really good like Dan Lawless to do a variant cover. Wouldn't that be awesome? Everybody in the chat, let's <laughs> thumbs up in the chat for Dan Lawless to do a variant cover. <laughs> I don't think we need thumbs up. I think you just need to ask. Dan's an awesome guy, and I'm sure he is an awesome guy. Dan was on my channel. If I didn't have to go to work, we would have been staying up till three o'clock in the morning talking talk comics. The guy loves comics and he knows comics. I was, oh my God, it, it, was, it was good. I, I I want him to come back. I, I actually missed talking to him. He was a good guy. You know how you just talk to somebody for an hour and you're like, man, I wish we were friends. I wish we lived closer. That's the way I felt talking to Dan. Such a good guy. And I was so intimidated because so talented. You know, I was like, you watch at the beginning, I'm like stuttering. and But by the end, I was like frantically talking about comics. It was great. Uh, Helder says I'd back a Jimmy Ray's art bearing cover for sure. Oh, Haldir, cool. Yeah. Hal Haldir um, bought one of my pine glasses. I shipped it all the way to Winnipeg and it didn't break. I'm actually uh, impressed. He he was my test run. Uh, Apex yeah. says uh, Dan Lawless is great. I need to hire him for a Fembat cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hire Dan Lawless for anything. You, you can't go wrong with that. I, I, put two I, comic oh, guys Lewis together and they'll talk all night. I, yeah. I know this because Jimmy Reyes was on my channel. We did a five hour. Wow. Uh, stream with Jimmy Reyes. Then, John, we get done, and for five more hours, Jimmy and, after me and some other guys are, are, are talking after off off air. Richard Embry. Yeah, it was crazy. No, the spirit I, I is really. Tell Jimmy, I have to go to bed. I like Jimmy. I have to go to bed. I have work in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I I live in New York. I wake up at four thirty in the morning for work. So I, you know, like I rush people off at nine o'clock my time because I I I. I can't do it but i would and then I, I i i didn't want to stop it was so much fun dan come back on and jimmy reyes message me come on my channel we'll talk you know i i anybody it's all about comics i want to talk comics don't care too much about drama i want to talk comics we love comics around here uh, yeah despite what people might tell us but uh, we do i'm a huge marvel fan not like i said not so much dc not so much okay uh, i grew up on marvel you grew up on Marvel. You didn't see. I I I grew up on Marvel, and my friend Mike, who has a, I, I'd be remiss in my friendship if I didn't mention he has a Kickstarter going out. Thunder Zone Comics. There's four or five comics. He has the Marshall Strong comic. It's actually part of the Heroic Tales universe because it's he's a player character in my role playing game. That you know, so that that it said I'm the DM. He's a player character, so. I actually made up the adventure that he's writing about. Oh, this we book. have a role-playing game too. That's uh, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge exciting. as if you couldn't tell by looking at all this shit behind me. I'm a yeah I'm a nerd. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's he's got a campaign going on right now. I kind of lost track of what the hell I was saying. <laughs> it, it happens to, to me all the time. I, I oh yeah, he, he was a DC sideways. guy growing up, and I was a Marvel guy growing up. And I used to be like Matterator lad, you know, uh, you know. Your ultra boy, you know, making fun. And he was one day he was just like, shut up and read the Legion of Superheroes. And we went camping together because our parents were friends and read the Legion of Superheroes. And I, I gotta say, I I fell in love with DC at you know, but first love was Marvel. Uh, Wizard says, Can I address the Omni Man shaped elephant in the room? Sure. Uh, I, I think he's saying that yeah, your character uh, the patriarch has a very uh omni man esque uh, look to him. Yeah, but this goes back to my uh, again. And Omni so Man has the Superman look to him. You yeah, know? that uh, this goes back to my idea. This is why the problem with um, people in this sphere is they're obsessed with the idea of ripoffs. It's not about what uh, character you're based uh, you're basing the character on, right? It's what you do with it. Right. The patriarch I, I, is completely unique in the fact that he lives up to his name. He is a father. So this is Superman. In a completely different direction than you would expect Superman to be. Right. Yeah. Also, we got Leem in the chat. What's up, Leem? But he does. I, I will too. say that I created the patriarch directly thinking of Omni Man. Well, patriarch is, is Omni Man if he was a good dad. You know, I like that was one of the things. Like, like I, I, and I love, I love what's his name, Robert Kirkman. I'm a Robert Kirkman fanboy. I get all of his comics. You know, Die, Die, Die. You know, I even got Super. 
Battle Pope or whatever that stupid comic was. Walking Dead. I got Walking Dead from issue one. But uh, and I do like Invincible, and I like what they did with Invincible. But I, I just so tired of the dads always being the bad guys. So yes, there's purposely some Omni Man in him, you know, and the fact that he has a beard, it's because like he's the rugged man, you know. Yeah, and yeah, you're saying exactly. Patriarch has totally different powers, though. Yeah. And I will say this: if he met Omni Man, Omni Man would beat the crap out of the Patriarch. <laughs> <laughs> I find all powerful superheroes to be dull. So the Patriarch. That's part of his thing is he's acting stronger than he is. He has to struggle, right? <laughs> he, he have to struggle. Um, he doesn't want anybody to think that he can't handle it because that's what your dad did. If you have a good dad, the dad didn't want you to know that you were a couple of weeks away from losing the house. You know, or maybe Christmas wasn't going to happen, so he had to pick up extra hours. You know what I mean? The firm didn't make that last deal, so now, you know, everybody's got to tighten. Dad didn't want you to know that. You know, you were Superman. I mean, dad was Superman to you. So... That's one of the things that uh, that one of the bad guys in this issue, he's going to be like, you're not who you say you are. You're a fraud. And when that villain returns, he's going to actually, you know, he's, he's going to figure out the patriarch's house powers work. Let's put it that way. Because he doesn't he doesn't make any bones. He, he you know, you saw him repair the fence. Superman can't do that. He, he has, you know, telekinetic abilities. And when he throws a punch at you, he's really telekinetically blasting you like Jean Grey, but he makes it look like he's punching you. You know, he's telekinetically lifting himself. So he's not really flying, but he is flying with, you know, and then he has these mental senses. So he doesn't have supervision and laser vision stuff, but he, he has, he has like these precognitive senses. So oh, that's interesting to figure out ways around this. You know, if you were to sneak up to him and punch him, you'd take him out. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have invulnerability. You know, you don't, when you shoot him, he t he telekinetically stops the bullets. You know, so bullets don't bounce. You, 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 you have my problem, don't you, John? What's that? You I got just, lots of you love your character so much that you just you, you're gonna give you away never the whole comic. Stop talking. I know. I know. Finn, Finn, <laughs> my artist is like, stop talking. I had to talk about the comic and what we're gonna do and plans, and it's like, dude, you're giving away the whole. No one's gonna buy the book if you tell them everything that's going on. You know. One, I, I was I was talking with a couple of guys. And they're like, show all the pages, show all the pages. You know this, and so and, and I was like adamantly against that until I read. You know, some people will keep it so close to the, uh, the chest that even when you read the comic, you don't know what the hell's going on. So like, I'm trying to walk that line. Yeah, yes, I get excited, and 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 I will tell too much, but that's because I, I I love it so much. You know. Like, George Peter Gatsis says, uh, that's what John Byrne did with the Man of Steel. Yes, again, you know, everything's an homage. You, 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 if if you take my comic and dissect it and get a microscope, you're gonna find all the comics that I read. You know, it, I this, actually it, find it a good thing because uh, okay, we've good. said this before. No like, no, 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 because before we uh, literally, I think yesterday we brought this up, right? The mainstream, let them do whatever they want with whatever with whatever properties they're doing. Now it's our chance to step in and say, this is the Superman you're looking for here, the Patriarch. If you want Superman of back in the day, here he is. We own the ideas. Let's do something with them, right? Let's give everybody the classics the way they want. Let the other kids have their mainstream stuff. But we can generate how uh, the, the older companies used to make comic books on our own. Well, a good writer doesn't hold your hand, John. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, oh, but, there, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I I didn't tell anybody. Uh, I I, I want to tell you. Excuse me. I want to tell you this. Uh, my father never met a six pack. He couldn't conquer me. Never quit. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I I I also. This is a this is a a full complete story. It's not a cliffhanger. You're gonna get this. You're gonna get a full story for ten bucks. You're gonna get a full story. You don't have to wait six months or whatever uh, you know i'm a rookie i'm an amateur i fully admit this um 80 percent of the comic is done already i want to get it done and we're already starting work on issue number two i would ideally like to get like two or three issues a year i want to get three issues done a year that's my goal if i could exceed that if it's great if i can't get to it that's that's what i want to work towards so uh, I, I don't want people waiting for forever. And I don't want you to be like, oh, man, I bought $10 worth of comic and uh, it's not done. 
you know, you'll, you'll get a whole story. I think that's important. And again, I tried to make $10, you know what I mean? I, it's a comic book. It should, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be 40 bucks for a comic book. I, you know, Finmar says shit. Sounds like us again. Yeah. We're also offering a complete story in our comic book. Well, there you go. There you go. You know, it, we're, we're, right you know, we're on the same I, page, John. We have the I, same I, idea. You know, I, I, I don't mean to be mean because there's so many people in, in the YouTube comic book world. I, I, I never been on your channel before, I, but these are good ideas. Good ideas don't exist in a vacuum. I, and, I, and I'm not smart enough True. to invent this stuff. So, uh, uh, wow, a complete comic book for the lowest possible price you could make. Jeez. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised all the people. I, I, I'm not a genius. Why aren't all the people doing it? They've had the formula back in the day, and it worked. Yeah, it says the only difference between us and John is we're charging five bucks more. Well, let, yeah. it, it, and we don't have glasses. We're not. We're not uh, selling glasses. Yeah. Well, if if you're driving a yacht and I'm struggling to pay the mortgage, I might have to uh, raise the price. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, but this just shows that I, I'm confident that I mean, you're looking at the art. I I wanted to show pages of the art to show you that you know I I, I didn't just hire Renzo to do the covers and hire some no name. To do the inside, you know what I mean. I, I I love it when the cover artist is is the in interior artist. You yeah. know, that's exactly what we said. That's why Finbar is doing the the main cover and oh, good. The interior art. Yeah, because Renzo asked me. He goes, "Can I? Am I going to do the cover?" So many times I don't get to do the cover. I said, "You're doing everything." And, and and then I asked him if he would be upset if I had a variant cover. You know, and he's like, "That's the way the business is. You got to have a variant cover." So you know. Uh, I have to ask the uncomfortable question, John. I don't sure. like asking this, but I have to uh because I ask everybody that has a kid. No, I will not go out with you. I'm happily married. Uh, oh, it's a different question? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that, that was it, but uh I got a second one anyway. <laughs> well now I gotta ask another uncomfortable question. <laughs> yeah, I gotta ask the second uncomfortable sure. Why not, John? No, no. Uh but I, no, uh, flatter me, flatter me, buy me flowers. You never know. Like, get me drunk. Uh, worst case scenario, John, you know. You go out there, you, yeah. You put the comic, you put the Kickstarter, fund my, uh, fund my. You comic. have to think of the worst case scenario. So yeah. So, doesn't get funded. Doesn't it flops? Uh, where do you go from there, John? Do you do? You, that's it. You're done. You pack it up. You like, oh, well, no one wants my. Or do you, I, I you laid out money again? for issue number one. So, issue number one's coming out. It's coming out. You know, if 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 if, if it, I I put a thousand dollars as the as the uh, as the goal. If if it doesn't make a thousand dollars, then I don't know what to say. But it, issue number one's coming out. If if you know if if it's, I I this is my model, and I don't know what you guys are doing. But issue one's paid for. I paid for it out of my own pocket. I'm a construction worker. I do all right, you know. So I I paid for everything. Ideally, I hope this makes enough money to make issue number two. If if you know if if I can make like eight or nine thousand dollars, I don't know if that's ridiculous or not. But this is me dreaming. You know, comic books are about dreams. Then I can make two more issues. You know, if I can make two more issues, then I'll make one issue, put that aside. And if I could do that again, I can make a third issue, put it. And then ideally, I'll have enough put aside. I want to make a, another mythological project. You know, like a big thing. I want to make it oversized, hard covered, like European edition for a project that I've been dreaming about for a long And that's, that's my goal. You know, I want to make a bunch of superhero comics and I want to make this legendary mythological comic that I don't want to even say anything about because I think the idea is so good. Somebody would steal it. So, Oh, and Dan asked, when am I launching? I, I should have said that right at the beginning, April 26th, April 26th. Tw thank you. Thank you. Issue number one from Construction Comics. Yeah, <laughs> that that would have been a good name. I should have thought about that. <laughs> Construction Comics. Yeah. So it's, it's funny like, because you, you... there's going to be an electrical based villain one of these days, and I'm going to show you how electrical powers actually work. I'm an electrician. You you don't just spray an electrician with water. Oh, that's I mean, you exciting. See, you know? I said that. No one believed me. Thank you, thank you, John's long box. When when I saw that, I go, he got hit with water. I go, that wouldn't do anything because he's based on electricity. I it have a life wire problem in Superman. <laughs> can, can I explain this? Do you guys mind if I geek out for go a second? Go ahead. Yeah, explain yeah, yeah. it. Okay. It, even with Steve Ditko with Electro back in the first appearance of Electro, they, they hose down the electrical villain and, th and they all say the same thing. We short-circuited him and he passes out. Okay? That's impossible. I, I'm an electrician. A short... All, all electricity travels in a circuit. It means it travels in a circle. It comes from the source to ground. 
Okay, that's what electricity does. A short circuit means it, it finds a shorter path to ground. Now you want to control that path. You want the path to be to the light bulb or the TV or whatever the device is that you're using. A short circuit means it goes someplace where you don't want it to go, which is usually it start a fire because it's, you know, you're a safety guy. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So when you're an electrical guy and your feet are on the ground, there is no shorter circuit than your feet to the ground. So it's impossible to circ out to short out that guy. If you squirt a guy who has electrical power, whose feet are on the ground, and you hose down, what you're doing is you're electrifying the water, and everybody who's stepping in the water takes damage. That's that's what happens, you know. And the only person to ever do that right was Bill Willingham's in the comic called the 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 Elementals had a character called the Electrocutioner, and they squirted him with water to shoot him out. And all it did was killed all the civilians in the room. You know, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oops, that's a and bad I read idea. That, that was like five, and I was like, "Oh my god, Bill Willingham does not play games." <laughs> Stray Bean says next he's going to be saying atomic bombs don't give you superpowers. Well, not in my world. They just make you dead. So, so how, how do you be an electric you, guy? You put electrical gloves on and you punch them. You, you fly so you're not grounded. So if you get hit with a lightning bolt, it doesn't do anything to you. And then you hit him with the rubber hose. I was going to trick him into shoot, a rubber room. And shoot him with island. rubber bullets. You know, just like how do you defeat Magneto? Superman throws a tennis ball at him from the atmosphere. You know, nothing nothing Magneto could do about that. Or hit him. Well, with, he could put up like a piece of How do you deflect like a tennis ball with, with the magnetic field? <laughs> well, because you pick, you pick up a piece of sheet metal. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Superman, though. But so Superman, Superman just heat vision. Heat force, vision. Yeah. Well, at that point, if it's Superman, Superman could just blow like his brain. I know, I know. But, but this is the kind of stuff I want to talk. This is comic book fighting. This yes. is the kind. Of, who, I wish it was this way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the thing can't. You know, Batman can't beat the thing. Fight me. There you go. Who? <laughs> I said Batman can't beat the thing. Fight me. The thing. You know. Batman can't beat oh, anybody. I'm tired of the Batman argument. Okay, I've had this yeah. so many times, John. Yes, and then that's they Batman. all say it's prep time. Well, if Ben Grimm had prep time, he could beat Yeah, Batman. exactly. See, that's... A, uh, ben Grimm has page, also John. been on the street. <laughs> they, 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 always go, they always go, well, Batman has prep time. I'm like, well, doesn't the other guy get prep time? Why does why Batman, Batman get prep why time? Why is Batman the only guy who gets prep time? You know, yeah. if Aqualad gets prep time, he could beat Superman. You know? Yeah. If Superman has no idea, he's walking into a fight. Boop, 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 boop. You know, and then Batman has prep time. You know, that's right. that's a different story. But t the Beyonder teleports two guys into an arena. The thing's beating the crap out of Batman. John Longbox, so getting hit by a radioactive spider won't give you superpowers, huh? Santa's not real. I will not say anything bad about Santa. You don't grow a beard like this when you're an old fat guy and not and not love Santa. Santa's as real as 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 everybody else. Uh, Batman did pretty well when he fought the Hulk. Yeah, I just read that. He punches him in the stomach and then sticks smoke grenade in his mouth. <laughs> I don't know if I had a ch uh, you had a chance or not, but uh, Liam's doing fulfillment. So if you missed out on Dino King, uh, now's your chance. Back it, back it. Now, Liam, are, are, are you going to fulfill awesome. your own comics? What do you, what do you guys think about that? Um, we've talked to RJ from Critical Blast. And there you go. On that route. I, I this is what I told RJ. I said if I'm selling. 99 comics or less, I'll, I'll fulfill it myself. If I'm 100 or higher, I'm going with RJ. And he, he, he said that was a good compromise because I'm so afraid of messing up and sending somebody the wrong thing. Or, you know what I mean? I, I don't want anybody to get mad at me because I'm a, I'm a, you know, a klutz or something. Get mad at me because I think Batman can't beat the thing. <laughs> when, I, when I have prep time, I make eggs. <laughs> Does anybody prep dinner prep anymore? You know? Well, I do sometimes. You have kids. Do you have? You don't have kids. When you have kids, you got to prep. But when you, I, I have a kid, but my kid's eighteen now. So. Oh, okay. He could. Oh, I have to prep. Yeah. Oh, you have an eighteen-year-old kid. Oh wow! Yeah. I, I'm. He sounds so young. I'm forty-three. I said. Yeah. I know, but that's still young when you're fifty-six. <laughs> yeah. I have at least one eighteen-year-old, and who knows what else is out there. They had a crossover with Usagi not too long ago, and I yeah with with the Savage Dragon and the tur Ninja Turtles. I, Usagi Ojimbo is one of my favorite comics. I, I love Usagi. 
John, there's a fulfillment service called Ripersend that you should check out. I don't know if I would meet the criteria for that. And I'm happy with RJ. He's a great guy. RJ from Critical Blast has been on my channel. He's he's a good guy. He's a, he's a passionate guy. How how can you not want to work with a guy like that? Uh, prep time. What's that? Uh, foreplay? Which foreplay? Yeah, yeah. that's prep time. <laughs> gotta get, get it all ready. Um, I, I hated uh, those old um, crossovers with like Batman it's fighting the Hulk and stuff. And because we know the yeah. Hulk. Yeah, those those big killer. treasury size editions. Yeah, yeah. The, the Superman Spider Man one with the Neil Adams cover. It was it was written for children, and that's not a bad thing. But uh, I didn't expect I because I just bought it a couple of years ago. I believe it or not, I never read it because I avoided those treasury editions. Because when you got six brothers and sisters. Big things get destroyed, you know. Comic books yeah, I was yeah. able to put in a box, put them under, you know, in the closet. But my treasury editions got destroyed, so I, I avoided them. So I, I bought it for the first time, and I was, I, I, I'm, I, I, people are gonna get mad at me, but I was disappointed. The Batman, Hulk one was excellent. It, it, it was written for all ages. Oh, that's the one with the uh, Shaper of Worlds in there, right? Yes, yes, yes. I enjoyed yeah, that. Was that. Pretty good. It was so much better than the Spider-Man Batman one, but they sold they sold gangbusters. And that's really all that matters. That critical blast is my choice. Apex says, "Yeah, RJ is a great guy." You know, it, you said you spoke with with him, RJ from Critical Blast. Yeah, yeah. How, how could you not like that guy? He's so infectiously enthusiastic about comics. We we've had him on the channel a couple times. Oh, you yeah, did. Good, 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 good. He's a good guy. So you said you, you had uh, ideas for comics uh, since you were a kid. Yes. You wrote these. Uh, is this one of those ideas or is this? Um... This comic, Heroic Tales, has, 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 has uh, spiraled out of my role-playing game. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there's a role-playing game that came out in the 80s called Villains and Vigilantes. And it was, you know, a, a, you roll three dice six just like you would for Dungeons and Dragons. I, I, I assume you guys know Dungeons and Dragons. I don't want to assume anything. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're dorks. We know Dungeon Dragons. You've played. So, you you know, you roll your strength, you roll your endurance, and, you, you know, and then you roll for powers, and, and you make a superhero character. And what I loved about Villains and Vigilantes, it was so swingy. That was, like, the biggest criticism. You can make a character that's, uh, you know, the Wasp, and then you can make a character that's Thor, and they're on the same team. I'm like, yeah, that's called the Avengers. That's, that's the way it works. There are completely swingy. Nobody in their right mind is going to say the Wasp is as powerful as a Thor. Having a balanced team isn't fun. The fun is coming up with a challenge as the DM to make it exciting for the weaky characters and the strong characters. So me and my friends have been playing. My friend Mike, who has his comic on, on Kickstarter right now, he's one of my players. We've been playing since we were 10. Now we're in our 50s. We got 40 years of, of stories that I polished off, shaped up, rewrote some of the characters, and then turned them into a comic book. You know, how many of us idiots dorks whatever nerds always said we were going to make a comic book about our DD campaign well i'm doing it you know but it's not DD. it's 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 superheroes it's v and v i didn't want to show this because um this is the stupidest this is why i hate crossovers so much there's a panel oh yeah the... yeah i just talked about the oh, hulk yeah. batman kicks the hulk in the stomach and then the hulk breathes in the the uh, the, 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 the the sleep gas okay there, there's no way that Batman can kick the Hulk hard enough, where it, where he's like oof, and, and he like is out of breath. Batman would kick. It's like kicking a, a fucking building, right? If I kick well, the this, building, I'm not this, making a hole in the bridge. Yeah, this is I'm called break my foot. massive muscle that is the Hulk. Yeah, we need this done because of the plot. That's that's what this is. Exactly the power of plot. Yeah, Batman takes a plot device out of his utility belt. Yeah, when I read this, I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, well, here's the thing. You say it's for the, the plot, right? But they set up the scenario in which uh, Batman puts the, the gas, right? And he puts his little gas mask on. And the Hulk's like, I'm too smart for this. They could have just not had the Hulk realize there was gas and have him breathe in the gas and like, yeah, you know, the, the lumbering brute. But here's, uh, the, here's the thing. Uh, there's a tiny Hulk. That's true. This. So they, I, I guarantee you the, the, the when they were making this, they're like, we got to have Batman get over on the Hulk in a cool way. And then we got to have the Hulk get over on Batman in a cool way. So that's, to me, this was edit the editors making this happen. You know, the editors should have, should have rethunk this. They should have maybe made the Hulk angry. So he's like yelling and that makes him breathe in the gas. But and then Batman, Batman tricks him, him, one up on the Hulk. him off. 
Yeah, because you pissed him off on purpose to make him. Right. He's like, ha ha, I, I can hold my breath. It's like, as, as a story, this is weak. But the editors, they, they need their character to look cool. You know, and then Marvel needs their character to look cool. And that's, you, you know, when they say like a camel is a horse designed by committee, that, there you go. <laughs> I'm, surprised that, I'm surprised that any of these crossovers were, were, were good, you know, when you get that many fingers in the park. Like, I, I think we could all agree the best crossover of all time is the X-Men New Teen Titans with, you know, Chris Claremont and and, and, uh, and uh, Walt Simonson. Do you know that one with Dark Side and Dark Phoenix? Yeah. Freaking awesome. I'm amazed that it's as good as it is considering how many editors and marketer guys and, and lawyers were involved. That's my two cents. Uh, Michael Keaton's Batman took out uh, that giant Krypton, Kryptonian in the Flash. I took that Michael Keaton's Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Michael Keaton's Batman is the one kicking the Hulk. <laughs> uh, yeah, kicking the Hulk in the balls would have been more believable. That that would have yeah. hurt him. Even I, even anything. If, yeah. yeah. Apex can't argue with that. You make it sense there. <laughs> you kicked Hulk in the nuts. <laughs> oh, here we go. Tony for simping for the Hulk. The Hulk is. Are you the, you're a Hulk fan? Yeah. Oh, he never shuts it's up about the Hulk. It literally <laughs> says in, in his little tagline, the uh, mightiest mortal to walk the face of the earth. Mightiest mortal. There should be no fucking person in the Marvel Universe that's a human that should be stronger than the Hulk. I have to agree with you. Uh, John Burns said that the specialist always wins. So if mm -hmm. Superman races the Flash, the Flash wins because the Flash's specialty is the fastest man on earth. Batman's specialty is he's supposed to be the greatest detective, not the greatest fighter. You know, so like if you ask me, like Iron Fist should be able to beat Batman in a fight, you know, but Iron Fist shouldn't be able to solve crimes the way Batman should, you know, and Superman Hulk is like, does not suck balls. <laughs> you know, but Hulk, you're right. Hulk should be the, the strongest of all. Thor should be the greatest warrior. You know, they, they all Captain America should be the greatest, you know, leader and strategic. Strategists, can I, am I saying that right? You know what I mean? Strategist, yeah. strategist, soldier, yeah. strategist. Yes, thank you. I couldn't say the word. Well, there, right. there, there's one take that I'm going to disagree with John. I seen John put it on Twitter, and because I'm drama free, oh, I know, I, Twitter, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Go ahead, go ahead. John, John, John is of the belief that Captain America's shield should never be should be impossible to break, right. even by Galactus. He goes, correct. Even Galactus shouldn't be, but Galactus has the power cosmic. He should be able to. Melt this thing into the base right. metal he, that, it, that it comes from. I forgot to follow it up. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot to follow it up because my theory is Captain America Shield was created by science, and then Captain America is a superhero, and his connection to this that it's an extension of Captain America. It's an extension of Captain America's will, and Captain America is indefeatable and therefore his shield it, like it's almost like he gives a psionic connection to it, and it just can't be destroyed. It's almost like a magic item. It's like a, an elven sword made by Tolkien. You, you, you just can't destroy it. And just like Captain America cannot be his, his will is uh, resolute. The, the shield is an extension of that. That's I never finished up. So thank you for reminding me. I, you want to get geeky. I'll, I'll get geeky and, and put that back on Twitter. So that's that's my point. It's, it's an ex intelligent design says no. Okay. But that's that's the way I think. Because you got Wolverine's adamantium claw should be able to go through it. What? No, right. adamantium is not this illustrious mixture that cannot be replicated, you know? It is, it is a vibranium adamantium mix. We don't know right. the percentages. Right. Yeah. His shield is so weird because uh, he throws it at people. And I would imagine if some dude, just some random guy, got hit in the head with Captain America's shield. That guy's dead, would, right? It would crush, it would crush, you know, d thrown by a guy that, like, according to the Marvel Universe, Captain America could bench press 800 pounds, thrown with this super skill. Yeah, if Captain America's throwing his shield at you, you it, it's it's worse than being shot with a bullet. <laughs> yeah. God, and you all just act like he just knocks people out. Like, oh, he just hit that. That guy's just sleeping. That Captain America just. Fucking chuck the shield a big. I guess anywhere. Captain America throws it with the fraction of his strength when he's dealing well, with yeah. it. Well, yeah. <laughs> if people disagree with me about the shield, I'm not going to fight. It's just one of those silly little. But yeah, you know, it's, it's an extension of his will, right? That's what you're trying to yeah. say. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Like, like Cyclops's eye beams should be able to like just knock down anything because that's that's because he has like like Black Bolt's voice 
is supposed to be like the most destructive thing. It can take out anything. And if he whispers, it shatters mountains. So like even the Hulk should be able to withstand Black Bolt's voice, not kill him or anything like that, but knock him down because he's reluctant to use like, we, we got to be in fear of Cyclops' eyeballs. Like, like if he loses his glasses and then somebody hits him and he blinks and boom, the juggernaut, well, not the juggernaut, the juggernaut can't be moved. You know what I mean? What you can't do is what you can't do. This shouldn't be like, I love that Jimmy Reyes is calling us nerds over this, but this is fun. Yeah, this is what I like to talk about, you know? Well, well speaking of Cyclops, here, here's something I don't understand. Sure. Cyclops, other than his eye beams, he's just a normal dude, right? Right. However, however, his eyelids, are keeping back his eye beams so right. theoretically his skin he should be stronger than he is because at the very least his eyes are holding back this huge well, force of concussive energy right right that's they say his skin reabsorbs his energy comic book anyway. science and his brother havoc shoots the same kind of energy they, they if they shoot each other i was about to bring up his brother yeah 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 Look at there's, there's, there's the it's wonderfully brother. nerdy, and that's one thing that bothers me is, is is the Marvel universe. They try to explain everything scientifically. Don't explain it science. Like that's why I always thought the DC Who's Who was a little bit better because they just said Superman flew. They didn't explain like the velocity of the molecular vibration and blah blah. No, Superman flies. Just just by it. Flash is fast. It's like uh, Star and Wars. Start with the the <laughs> yeah. So 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 if, oh my God, if, if um, that I'm sorry, I was talking. What'd you say? It is a question. So if somebody were to skin Cyclops, uh, would they be able to use that to protect themselves from his beams? Um, I would say no, because he's no longer alive in the in the uh, the, the, the metabolism that, that breaks down that energy stops working, maybe for a couple of minutes or so. How's that? All right, I'll buy that. I, I guess there's gotta be a process. There's gotta be some kind of They're both solar powered, aren't they? It's not solar kinetic, right? It's been a while since. It, yeah, uh, yeah. The, it, in that X Men Annual, was it number seven when they when they went to that the, the Conan ripoff world, Archon, Cyclops actually shot his energy beam so much, and the world was in darkness that he that he couldn't use his powers anymore. But I, that's like one of those things that people forget about. And Cyclops is another dad. I, I, you know. Like it or not, he married Marilyn Pryor. Like it or not, he didn't, you know, and I firmly believe that she was not created to be the Goblin Queen. She was created, you know, because Jean Grey was supposed to be permanently dead. Married her, and I think they were tired of him. I think they really wanted to send him out in retirement. And then he has a kid, and then they brought back Jean Grey, and he runs away like a little bitch and abandons his <laughs> wife and kid. And I, I love Cyclops. I, I love the, the hero that has this power that's almost a curse. And because, like, Black Bolt has to, he, he can't afford to mess up. He has to be focused. He has to be struggle. Yes, you know, he can't drink. He can't smoke. He can't lose control. And same with Cyclops. I Something about that appeals to me. And then he's a deadbeat dad. And I'm like, all right, that, they ruined the character. And Straight Bean says, I think the eyelids are misdirect. It's a head injury that caused Cyclops to not control his powers. It's all in Cyclops' head. Yeah, he, he, he when, when uh, him and his brother were thrown out of the airplane, they, mm -hmm. the, the, the parachute was on fire, and then they dropped, and they got a they got a head injury. So does I, does, does the eye beams I, I, come from behind his eyes? I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> do, do, do the eye beams generate from behind the eye or from in front of the eye? Is it like do they go through the eye? Like if he took his eyes out, would it make him less or more powerful? If he took his eye, I don't know. I don't know. That's a gory question. That it that would be, be something from like the brain, though, just, right? I Mr. Sinister would out. dissect them and find that out, right? Wouldn't that be mm. a, a gory issue? Yeah, they did Cyclops. Now he's like a complete asshole. He's like oh, a God, Magneto yeah. 2.0. And, uh, yeah. Isn't he like hooking up with Emma Frost at one point? Well, that's another thing. If I was writing the X-Men, I would make it do a story where look at all of the <laughs> figures in Cyclops' life. They're all telepaths, right? His first mentor was a telepath. His first love was a telepath. His his second love was a telepath. What the F is going on with Cyclops? I would say that he's so introverted and he's so into focus of controlling his powers that he can only get intimate with somebody who could get into his, his mind. And, oh, and, yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? And I, I would explore that as, as a story. Like, this is a guy who's so effed up, who's so afraid of showing emotion, so afraid of... of, of, of showing vulnerability that he can only 
become, you know, in a relationship. They need somebody who him. sees that for him, right? Yeah, yeah. They can so, express that for him. But it uh, has to be a telepath. But Interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't have the right identity markers to a uh, right X Men, so you know. You want to hear something funny? I could have sworn that Gail Simone was on the Long Island Railroad today, and I was this close to asking this woman, "Are you Gail Simone?" How funny would have that? Should have. Do you think she lives in? I never been funny. I have How, no idea. Wouldn't that be for anybody in the chat now? Wouldn't that be funny to like randomly sit next to Gail Simone and talk to her about comic books? You know. Why did she change your mind? Why, why did you talk to her and she was like so awesome? You're like, oh my God, I like Gail Simone now. I'm well, like, I'm not going to lie. If, if, if she's awesome and changes my mind, then, you know, I don't want to hate anybody. I don't want to, you know, you know what I mean? I've had people on my channel that I was like, I think it was a mistake inviting this person on. And they turned out to be wonderful. You know, I'm talking about you, Dan. That was a joke. And I hope Dan's still in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Just look away and yell, Gail. Oh, that would have been funny. That would have been funny. That would have been funny. That's like well, a George Seinfeld uh, type. Yeah, that, that would have been funny. That, yeah, I didn't think of it. To tell the truth, by the time I get on the train, I'm like, oh, I just want to sleep. Stray Bean says, there's either a portal to a different dimension full of that force. Uh, it's like an on-off switch. I think that right. was a later explanation for the powers. I think originally. That's what they said in the Marvel Universe, you know. Did, did they say it was like the same dimension as the satiric force? Oh, Dan, okay, good. He's in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, BP enjoying... says I would like some of Gail's comics. Right, I I, I really liked the. There was a comic she wrote called Leaving Megatropolis, and it was like a retirement community for old superheroes. It was an excellent comic. You know what do I have? What 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 do I get out of hating somebody's comic? If it's a good comic, it's a good comic. You know, th there's plenty of people. Let, let, let's let's be thankful that we didn't have the internet. You know, in the 70s and 80s, because how many of these comic book writers and artists were probably horrible people? We just don't know anything about it. And we give them the benefit of the doubt because we love their work. The Secret Six, Sandman just said, that was excellent. You know, so, I, I meant George from Seinfeld. Jimmy. Yeah. I didn't mean George Seinfeld. Everyone else understood except for you. Yeah, everybody, Jimmy. everybody else knew, but Jimmy. <laughs> and you want to come on my channel, you want to be my latex Jimmy. salesman. You know, uh, Tony, quick question. If an artist is paid for their work, is that considered a hand job? <laughs> Possibly. Welcome to sure. with their feet. <laughs> Thank you, Stray Beans. I said the wrong title. Welcome to Tranquility. That was the name of the comic. Yes. That was excellent. That was excellent. There was, you know, there were so many good things. You know, and so what do I if she puts out a good comic? Good. Isn't that isn't that what we want? Now, yeah. The only art, the only writer that I really do have like if this guy puts out a good comic, I'm, I'm I'm like having a struggle session. Do I want to buy this guy? Is Mark Wade because what he did to Richard C. Meyer is unforgivable, you know. And I know people don't want to hear it, but Mark Wade created Comics Gate by by getting by getting Richard C. Meyer. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? He meant to yeah. he made a comic. Yeah. It was going to be put out by Art Antarctic Press in the mainstream comic book press. Mark Wade got it squashed, and then he had to crowdfund the comics. And to me, that was. You know there was crowdfunded comics before that, but that was that was Comicsgate. Mark Wade is Doctor Frankenstein, and we are all the creations created by Mark Wade. I would love to have him on my channel and explain. You see, this is all your fault. You created you know, us, you Mark. Can't, <laughs> you can't leave Comicsgate until you work for the mainstream. You know, it's all it's all tortious interference. Thank you. I do. I I, I couldn't think of the word, and I didn't want to sound like more like a moron than I actually am. We just call it tortoise interference. Here. In my uh, my link, thank you, I appreciate it. Lee yeah, says CD was around before that too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Wade makes me itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Katie did's doing the Lord's thank work. You, with, uh, thank you, and John's link out there. Uh, so, as a writer and someone who doesn't draw and who's uh, like me, ban at art, uh, is it weird when people? Send you things, and you got to like, well, that's not exactly what I want. I'm going to need you to change it. Oh, wait, you wait, just... wait. I will say this. Uh, Renzo asked me for detailed descriptions in the panels. So I gave him detailed panel descriptions in the panels. And except for a few real minor things that, you know, he, he Spanish is his first language that I think maybe was, you know, problems in the, you know, miscommunication. For the most part, what I pictured in my head is what he put on the page. You know, the, 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 the changes were so minor. And at one time I asked him to change something and uh, 
He was like, okay. And he was done in like five minutes. And I forget that people draw on digital pads and they could just tap and erase something. I'm thinking he has to throw away the panel and redraw everything or, you know what I mean? So e even the changes that I, that I asked were, were very minor, you know, some of the color corrections, cause I don't, except I I'll go like, okay, this is the patriarch's colors of a suit, you know, in it's daytime, you know, and I, I trust the colorist to, to, to do what the colorists do. They're, they're the professionals. I'm not only once that I'm like, Oh, could you fix this? Because it, it, it's a story part for later on in another issue. Oh yeah, sure. And they didn't know that because they didn't read the other issue. I only sent them the script. You know what I mean? Um, I I I don't like to be a boss. I like to think of it as we're all buddies making a comic book. I don't know if that's naive, but so far it's been a pleasure working with the guys and getting the comic book has been a pleasure. The difficult part is me not realizing that there was like a step. Like, oh, we got to get the files formatted for printing. I didn't know that was a step. You know. Uh, Finbar says, I asked for the same. Tony gave me stick figures, then complained when I didn't draw it exactly how he envisioned it in his mind. Yeah. I did. I made him redraw that page four times. Uh, and, you know, fit, yeah, is, I know Dan's an artist. And any Anybody ever get a script? And then they just not, you know, the writer complains or whatever. Like, whose fault is that? I, I blame the writer. You know, ultimately, it's me because it's my comic. So any problem in the comic, it's my fault. You know, I don't want anybody yelling at Renzo or, or, or Daniel, you know, or Oscar or, or Ron, you know what I mean? If there's any problems, uh, the buck stops with me, you know, and, and, uh, when you grow up with seven brothers and sisters and, you know, you're construction, we, we could take, we could take criticism. You know, I, I promise if you criticize me and, and, uh, you know, you're not some psycho yeah, the writer. It's the writer's it's fault. No, Finbar, it's your fault. If my comic yeah. sucks, it's Finbar's fault. <laughs> well, you, if it's good, what works for you guys? Yeah. You know, for us, if it's bad, it's Finbar's fault. If it's good, it's all because of me. My leadership. <laughs> that's that's absolutely fair. That's absolutely fair. You know, if, if, in all if, seriousness, um, one thing about Tony is his uh, his vision is very particular. Like it, he'll tell oh, you exactly great. what he wants to see, and he'll yeah. give it to you. And then if you don't get it right, he'll tell you, no, 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 no. Here's another detail I want you to add. That that's something well, that's I like about him. I have, a, you know, you know, the, my my first issue is is getting your toes in, in wet in, in in my world. So I didn't want to delve delve too deep into into my nonsense. But by the fourth issue, Renzo's going to be like, oh man, you know, I'm like, no, no, it has to be like this because it, you know this is the way it works. You know, th there's a few things like I, I don't want to give it away because. You already said I gave away too much, but like there's a little coloring details. It has to be this way because it's it's going to make sense in issue 12. You know, there's, there's, there's a subplot that nobody knows about yet that will make sense. I want it to be one of those things you go, oh, that's Fuck it, John. John, you're describing exactly uh, things that we've talked about in our comic. This is insane. There's going to be a little there's gonna John be a little is like the old person that told me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, good. Like there's well, a little thing in the comic that you're not gonna know. Nothing gonna exists be, in a vacuum, be... you know. We're, we're, yeah. we're all reading the same comics. We're all inspired by by the same comics, you know. So, well, they always say there's only two stories to tell, right? Uh, a man goes on an adventure, or a stranger comes into town. After that, it's all the same. Well, there we go. <laughs> I, I am a self-confessed asshole. I, I believe Tony is autistic. I'm 100 certain he's a jerk. I am both uh yeah we, we're uh we got certain details in the comic where i'm like okay i'm gonna put this in there and it's not gonna make sense at first uh, but eventually you're, you're, it's gonna nag you a little bit but it'll eventually get explained and then you're like oh that's why that makes so much sense yeah little yeah a little reward for some deep reading i i i don't know if you're familiar with tonic bowl but i i, I read uh I, I love his comic saving the world and i read it and then uh Something was nagging at me and nagging at me. And I reread the series. And I'm like, that little crazy maniac genius. This is why he did that. You know, there's little Easter eggs that he's been throwing out through the whole story, you know, and, and I love that. You know, I it so again, I'm making a self-contained story. You could buy my heroic tales, enjoy it, and never read another comic book, and you'll be satisfied. That's the goal. You hear what he, John just said? You could buy his comic, read it, and never read another comic book ever. He's the greatest comic ever. Once that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you said know, never I mean? read another one. You're not going to buy a, an expensive <laughs> comic book and need to read the next six ones to make your expensive comic book make sense. I, I, you know, I, 
I don't even like that I'm charging ten dollars, but economics is what economics is. So you get my comic, and uh, it it it's it's a uh, it's a satisfying full meal in itself. Dan says the right the artist job is to be an extension of the writer's mind. Yeah. Exactly. And th this is the extension of my mind. This is what my artist is working on. Cool. These are our, uh, What's the name of character uh, again? Uh, he's the fabulous frogman. The fabulous frogman. Did you Google Frogman? Yeah. A uh, Marvel character is named Frogman. There's okay. also um you don't but yeah. he's frog hyphen man and then frogman together is um a military term. However, uh, it has not been trademarked by anybody. We're not trademarking it, and that's why the comic's not actually called Frogman. The comic's uh, awesome. It could be an adventures. Much like Tales of Astonish and all that, it's going to have a nice, cool little name, and then it's just going to be starring. So much and like the, Captain Marvel. behind that where people are yeah. saying out loud, it's a Frogman, and then the guys think, oh, would it that be, would it be nice if that's my name? Frogman, that sounds nice. <laughs> like that. I, I, I just really... came naturally. I really like this this woman over here in the corner. I just I can't wait to see that colored. Yeah, like I said, we, we've had him redraw this four times. Yeah. Four pin bar. <laughs> yeah, four pin bar. But I'm excited. I'm excited for my stuff. I'm excited for John's stuff. Your stuff sounds Thank good. You. Uh, it's Thank launching you. before us. Uh, I, you know. You know, I, I I know this drama. This guy's comic sucks. That guy's, but you know, I want that guy's comics to be good. You know, it it rising tide float, floats all boats. Boats. I I I think anybody who puts out a bad comic right now, it's it's just bad for all of us. You know, I want all the comic. I'm the Muhammad Ali of comics. I know we look exactly the same, and we're in the great same great shape, except I'm in this. He's dead, and I'm in the same great shape as that. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm I'm babbling, but uh. I, I I think uh rooting for rooting for somebody to put out a bad product is bad, you know. People I don't like can make good comics. That's it's it's about the comics, it's not about the personalities, you know. When we make it about us, I think we're detracting from the art form. If it's, 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 do I sound like too uh Pollyanna here? I've been accused no. of that too. And we we've uh I delve into drama. And it's usually to get eyes on the channel, so then we can go ahead and promote people like you, right? We want, we need people watching. There's 72 people watching now, and this wouldn't have happened if we weren't uh, critical of other people. And, and no, critic, criticism out. is fine. And it's and, a uh, learning experience, right? It's like you get the chance to see a master class criticism. In don't walk out the door. Yeah. Hmm. I I I was full on into my first comic you know i was making it everything like that and i shared the script with, with 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 he hates when i tell the story with brian bow who does wolf and batsy and he just said this is awful it's all about world building and it's not about the characters and man i wanted to beat him up you know but it hurt criticism hurt but he was 100 percent right and i rewrote the script from scratch you know what i mean i started all over again and i he was absolutely 100 percent right now, can you imagine if I didn't get criticism? I'd be on your channel talking about a comic book. Everybody would get it, and the next thing you know, I'd be the, the you know the laughing stock. You know what I mean? That's because you can't edit yourself. You, you know, it's, it's it's just like your kid is the most wonderful kid in the world, making noise in the restaurant, driving everybody else crazy. You know, it's it's hard to be self-critical. So, anybody who's doing this or any art form, if you can't take criticism, leave. Absolutely leave. You know, you criticizing something. What do you want me to say? You, you know, get mad at you? You know, I don't think you're doing it to be a jerk. I'm doing it because you saw something that bothered you. You know? Yeah. Uh, Wizard says, I wouldn't be in a better creative position if you hadn't been critical of others. Well, thank you, Wizard. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. There you go. Now, what? I, and I know who we're talking about. This guy's biggest problem is is uh, he, got a, he made a comic and people were critical of it. And what he should have done was say, you know what? I hear what everybody's saying. Next issue is going to be better. I'm going to take what everybody says into consideration. It's time to refocus. And thank you. You know, let's. Would anybody be upset today? Would there be a problem today? No. 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 Right. Take the criticism. And I hate Ethan Van Skyver said this, and he's 100% right. I hate when people say that argument is in bad faith. What the F does faith have anything to do with it? If the point is valid, the point is valid. 
Why are we making it religious? When he said that, I almost fell out of my chair. And it's good I didn't fall out of my chair because I was on the second story of an unfinished building. Hey, Hojo. <laughs> What's up, Hojo? Hojo? I love Hojo. Thank you for showing yeah. up. I got to get him on my channel soon. Hojo's yeah, a great guy. Looks a, very Hojo has a comic called The Mythicals. Uh, yeah. Issue number two is still live. I can't wait. And Hojo's another guy that helped me out, you know? I, and uh, any way I could return the favor to Hojo. Good guy. And Riley says uh, his biggest problem is that he flagged the tramters like Tony and I for mocking him. Specifically, everything uh, after that was karma. Well, I don't want to mock the person, you know? If, if the product is, I don't like Gail Simone and I don't like when people call her fat. You know what I mean? I'm once you get into personal stuff, I don't want to hear it. That's not about the comic. Make it about the comic. If, if, if you, I, we're all beating around the bush, but if you, I didn't like Isom. Eric July has been on my channel. He's been nice to me personally. I got nothing against the guy. I don't like the comic. Eric never directly asked me if I liked Isom and I wouldn't lie. I don't want to lie. I would have said I didn't like it. And I spent seventy dollars on a product I didn't like. When he got you, you went seventy dollars deep on that. Yeah, I bought I I bought the first issue because I didn't know any better. You know what I mean? I was all excited. It wasn't out yet. Then I he came on my. I, I was like, you know what? Maybe the second issue fixes everything. But oh, I thought you meant seventy on the first issue. I was like, Dang, oh no, 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 no. Thirty five dollars for thirty five dollars is seventy dollars. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know what? Criticize the comic. Don't make it personal. Don't make it. And, and if I, I'm going to make up a hypothetical person, Phil Moskowitz, Phil Moskowitz makes up a comic book and I criticize the comic book and forget about good faith and all that nonsense. That's just silly. And if, and if the, the criticism is valid and, and Phil Moskowitz blows up and, and, and screams and yells and what that's on him, that's on him. That's his fault, but I'm not going to start. Oh, now Phil Moskowitz is fat. Phil Moskowitz got warped. What does that have to do with the comic? And I, and I, you know, and I'm not. I, I've done it too. So I'm, I'm not a saint over here. I've done it too. I, I said nasty things about Gail Simone that I shouldn't have say. That I that I uh, that I shouldn't. That I'm not proud of. I'm trying to be better. You know. I'm I'm a, I'm a human. But well, it happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, well, I mean, Phil Moskowitz is uh, Phil Moskowitz and myself are feud. Fix the correcting. Edit it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't just happen. It, it, it's a it's a process. But I'm trying to get better. <laughs> I was told by somebody uh, that I trust that I would be a lot happier if I didn't get involved in so much drama. And so I've been trying. I, we're like a week into a drama-free Tony. Well, how, how do you feel? Uh, all honestly, how do you feel? Bored. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest. Things have been better, Tony. Come on. Well, let me put it this way. My, I, I, my, this, the Twitter that I use, Zentorian 2000, I made that up in like 19 whatever. I forget when Twitter started. And I didn't like Twitter and I barely used it. When I started my comic book channel, I made a Twitter, John's Longbox. You know, it fits. That Twitter got nuked because I argued with people. And I realized I this is the Twitter that promotes my YouTube channel that's going to promote my comic book. And I just got it nuked because I couldn't control myself. I argued with some jerk over about environmental protest pro protesters blocking the highways. You know what I mean? I didn't change their mind and I lost something that I thought was valuable to promote a comic book that I, that I wanted, you know what I mean? So I realized, you know what? Arguing on the internet with, with people, it, it's stupid. I don't do it anymore. And yes, I still do it even though I said I don't because I'm a stupid human. But uh, when it comes yeah, real to... Real quick. I sure. got to go over this. I get too real quick. Right yeah, gifted. No, because I got gifted 10 memberships from ASE Presents. And I love this because uh, ASE Presents gifted 10 memberships. And one of the memberships went to ASC Presents. They gifted themselves some memberships. Congratulations. <laughs> they gifted themselves. Also, Kent, Chewy, uh, Pink Bunny Zero, Jay Wu. Uh, who else we got? Uh, John Wong, uh, R2 D Tuna. Oh, that's a uh, good Literature name. Devil. R2 D Tuna. Uh, Whoever you are, bravo on a great freaking name. Clever. <laughs> you should be writing comic uh, books. <laughs> Lit Devil, uh, Chris Mills, and Psycho Crusher. Uh, congratulations on getting a membership. I'm, Enjoy. I'm, Thank you again, I'm, I'm, Riley I'm, and Mint. I'm such a Luddite. What does it mean when you gifted men memberships? What happens? I, you know, even so though I I'm, have memberships on the channel. So if you gift a membership, then that means uh, somebody is now a member of your channel. So they get all the perks. Uh, we got emojis they can use. Okay. We got exclusive. Have access to a few things. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. We got membership polls. I got members uh, on my channel, but I, 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 I don't know if anybody gifted. I don't, I don't know what that means. I, I, I really got to step, uh, step up my YouTube game. <laughs> I'm still Twitter using says pool. Oh, block hoppy bitches. Yes. I, I got to say, I've uh, never blocked anybody. Up. I've never muted anybody. I just ignore them. You know, if, like, like, you know. I, I said this earlier today. There's a restaurant around the block for me that sucks. I just don't talk about it, and I don't go there. <laughs> right. Sandman says, uh, as fond as I do feel with a lot of Fabian's writing, that interaction he had with John's long box was uh, pretty shitty. Yes, I have to agree. I have a policy that if you've been on my channel, I don't want to talk bad about you for two reasons. It's, you know, you met the human being and you talked. Second off, it's a bad policy. Why are you going to come on my channel if you know I talked about you two months later? You know what I mean? But Fabian Nisieta is the only exception. While we were talking, I was gushing about how much of a comic book fan I am. And I show him my, un right over here is a big stack of unread comics. And he says, you have mental issues. And oh, I was no. this close to that's, saying, that's how many less comic books, would, how many less of your comic books would you like me to buy to make you happy? Was it, was it a joke? Maybe it was a bad joke. Well, it's still, and, yeah, whether it's a joke or not, Jesus, that sounds no, terrible. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, uh, he went on Twitter saying, uh, T Gina Carano got what she deserved. So I, I played stupid and I said, well, I don't follow star Wars. What did Gina Carano say? And Fabian Nisienda literally said, I don't know. I don't pay so attention. Oh so yeah. That's right. We covered that. It, right? We covered yeah. that. Remember, that's what he yeah. told you to stick the comic up. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So I said, so you don't know what she said. You don't pay attention, but you know, she got what she deserved. And then he told me that not only did he tell me to stick a comic book up, man, a treasury edition. So the size yeah. of that Hulk first Batman. So I said, no, Fabian, I'll leave the butt stuff to you. And, you know, I, and I remember that Ethan there. came and showed us that something it, happened before. And now we know the more context yeah. as well. And, 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 and you know what? If he wrote a good comic, I'd still buy it. I still consider that less vile than what he did to Richard, C than, than what Mark, Mark Wade did to, to Richard. C you don't mess with somebody's business. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't mess with somebody's ability to, to, to pay the mortgage, you know? Telling me to stick up a comic book up, it just it just showed me that you're an immature jerk, but you didn't you didn't yeah. take food out of my you know mouth or, or money out of my bank account. You don't mess with somebody's family, you don't mess with somebody's income, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mint Salad says, I don't mind anyone being friends with Matt Barr, uh, but it's lame he's crusading against me. Well, yeah. Um it is what it is. I I, I just don't like what people are saying about mob bar when you know it's not true that's that's unacceptable if he wants to say something and you don't think it's true making up something is is not the right response ignoring the guy till it goes away or or whatever just it earnest say like listen mean you don't get along that's fine no we're adults we don't have to get along but you know s stop saying that but making up a lie to to, to, to battle something and and i don't know if what he's saying is true either, because I, I, when I see a fight over there, I turn over here and then I want to talk about Batman cannot beat up the thing. No, he can't. Um, Dan Clayton, says, my first Marvel superhero comic U S agent was written by Fabian. It was a nightmare. Oh, really? I'm trying to remember that comic. Cause I, I, I have fond memories of uh, new warriors. That's a, That was a good comic. And while he was on my channel, he, he talked about, uh, Imperius Rex being being like a, a, a early king of, of of the of Atlantis, and I was getting excited. That was a great idea. How did somebody not think of that before? And then he tells me stick a comic book up my ass. So, <laughs> but he still that whole a, Imperius Rex thing makes no sense in the MCU. And I'm like, you made him Mexican, and then like then he's like Imperius oh, Rex. Okay. I'm I, like, oh, yeah. we talked about that too. Name Namor is Roman backwards. They worship Poseidon. You know, it's understood they they speak Latin. Atlantis is 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 a European Roman derived civilization. If you don't make it that, then it's not Namor. Make it's up a new. Anyway. I have yeah. zero tolerance yeah. for when they switch things around like that. That shows me that the people who made I didn't see that movie because those people have no respect for the source material. And this is what I was talking about. Why I quit Marvel in DC. When Ta-Nehisi Coates, who was a tourist, came and started writing Marvel comics, he didn't respect the source material. He 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 did what he wanted to do, which is not you're not better than Jack Kirby, you're not better than Steve Ditko, you're not better than Herb Trump. You're not. So why do I want to read these comics? 
you know. And then where yeah. is he now? He's not with comics. He moved on. This was just this was just them, stop yeah. on a pull bus. Yeah, young clip was right. If Namor Namor is trying to fuck Sue, if you don't do that, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Sandman so, says, I never picked up on his name being Roman backwards. Oh, okay, yeah. If 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 Namor ain't trying to bang everything with two legs, then that that ain't Namor. John was Avengers Spotlight thirty one and thirty two. Wh which one? Which? What were we talking about? I'm such a old man. I forgot exactly what we're referencing. The U.S. Uh, the U.S. Agent. Oh, the U.S. Agent. The U.S. Agent. Okay. Yeah, Avengers Spotlight wasn't that good, right? That, that was a very that was like one of those comics made by editorial decree. It, it, does anybody remember any particularly good issues of Avengers Spotlight? No. Right. No, no, I got them all. Read them all because I'm a lunatic, but I don't remember. I, but that's. I think I got that issue too. This uh, 31, 32. I, I have it because I'm a lunatic, and if I have a comic, I have the full run because I'm a lunatic that way. I'm not a collector. Are you a collector or are you a reader? Me? Yeah. If I buy a comic book, I have to read it. There's there's been three comic books that I've paid for that I that I couldn't finish. So, you know, I got fifty five over fifty five thousand comics. Uh, uh, I have twenty. Well, I'm down to eighteen long boxes of comics that I haven't read yet because I bought collections and I buy too many comics. So, you know, I I. In, in that picture that I showed you of my comic book room, behind me is the comics that I didn't read. And when I read them, they go into what I call the general population. So I have to read the He's comics. He's got Gen Pop. Yeah, that's they're out there in solitary right now. He's like, no, no, you don't get to go to Gen Pop yet. Yeah. You know, they have the urge to revisit comic books sometimes. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Yeah, I'm, I'm rereading... Uh, oh, where is it? Right. I'm rereading this. Vertigo's Books of Magic. I just, re you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm rereading all of these. I don't know why. Something I, I was sorting through my comics again, and I'm like, I forgot how these go. You know, so it's time to reread them as I drop comics on the floor. So yeah, I, I, I I'm rereading the Agents of Atlas. What a great series to me. That was like the Century and the Age of Atlas was like the last really good things from Marvel. And then I heard like the Agent, Agents of Atlas is now uh, like all the Asian superheroes, but it was originally all the 50s Atlas comics. You remember yeah. Marvel was Atlas in the 50s and they had various superheroes that didn't take off. And then they rebrought them back as, as a Marvel comic somewhere around like 2005. And I thought that was excellent. So this, the century for me is, uh, I hate the century. Oh, really? Yeah. I can and see the I reason. Well, I don't, I don't hate the century because he's actually a pretty cool character and everything. I hate the century because I bought into the lie. That <laughs> Wizard Magazine fucking sold me. Right? Like, oh, this is an unreleased Stan Lee character from way back in the day. We found it in a oh, drawer no, in you. Marvel. <laughs> no, they didn't, but it wasn't fooled because they had Wizard Magazine write an article. They printed it up and treated it as if it was true. And so yeah. that was like the marketing the behind it. Well, I, that's not marketing. That's lying. If you go, yeah, hey, well, this is an unreleased Stan Lee book that we found in the back of Marvel's office. You go, oh, shit, I, that's interesting. And you buy it and you go, no, actually, this is not. You, you lied to me. This is written by like Joe Schmo. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that, was, that was Paul Jenkins. Yeah, I, 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 well, I respectfully disagree. I, I love the century. I love the fact that it was all a hoax. And this is going to sound awfully pretentious. When they they said that the the artist was Al Rosen, I knew that something wasn't kosher because there was no Al Rosen. You know, it was it was uh, Sal Rosen was 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 the name, and Al Smek or Artie Artie Rosen was the name they made up. So they took two existing names and mushed them. So I was like, something's not up. And and then they uh they presented that the, the century had this power that he. Like projected his, his he was he's schizophrenic, so he's he's the void and he's the century. Spoilers for a twenty year old comic. So if he uses now, power, man. what's that? I said it's twenty years now. It just feels like I know, doesn't years. it? It seems like yes. So the more he uses his powers, the more like he, he develops his anti powers. You know what I mean? I and and what he does is in his mind he was at Reed Richards' wedding. He was the best man when he in his mind. He's the Hulk's best friend. In his mind, he goes to Asgard and even Odin. But does that really happen? No, he's just so powerful that he was created that year. And he his psychosis projects into all of these superheroes and lies to them. 
And it also lied to us as the art. I thought it was brilliant. The problem is Bendis then took him over him and, and ruined him. Oh, no. I thought I thought the six issue century series was awesome. I like I I was like this doesn't seem right. There's something so like the, yes they lied to me, but it just worked so well with the context of the character and the powers. I thought it was brilliant. And then and then Ben just Stanley probably thought he really did create century. Yeah, probably. You yeah. never know. Yeah. <laughs> well, even if he didn't, he would tell you he did because that's he what will Stanley. tell you exactly. Then he would make up a story of how he did. Don't, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I did. That. I remember that. I was talking to Jack Kirby one day about Superman. I was like, we should have one of those, Jack. And then, and then they, and then they gave him to Bendis, and they turned him into just another overpowered hero. And and they're saying, oh, he has the same powers as the Molecule Man. No, he clearly doesn't have the same powers as the Molecule Man. He, you know, and. and the fact that like he's schizophrenic, then you find out that his wife is 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 like captured and he he alters her memories, and every once in a while she finds out that her true life, she, she's just a woman that he became infatuated. Everything about the century was creepy and eerie, and he's overpowered. And I thought he was brilliant. The the Marvel character that I hate, and everybody's gonna jump on me, call me race. I hate the blue Marvel because here's a character. No, they just created him, and then we're told he's the greatest, most powerful character of all time. But he didn't earn it. You can't just, you know what I mean? Like I get hired by Marvel tomorrow, and I go, "Oh, the Patriarch is the greatest Marvel superhero of all time. He's better than everybody. He's he did it first. He he was just, you know, hiding from. Every, you can't do that. You have to earn it. This gravitas is earned. It can't be decreed. The same thing with Carol Danvers. They decreed that she's popular when it wasn't true. That she didn't earn that gravitas. You know what I mean? It, and that's why people rejected her because we were told that she was the best. We were never shown she was the best. And the blue Marvel is just, oh, we have a black superhero who's more powerful than Superman. He's the best. But, but what did he do? Oh, he just sat in his farm and did nothing during slavery. Well, then he's the worst superhero in the world because he could have changed the world for the better. Yeah, he chose not always to. That plot hole. Well, well, isn't that why Wonder Woman is a terrible character in the uh, movies? Because Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman, she takes part of World, World War I and helps stop that. Then in Wonder Woman 84, World War II still happened. So she she sat there and let World War II happen. Well, I will say this. I did not see I, – I, I, I stopped watching the DC movies at Man of Steel because they fundamentally got Superman wrong. And I was like, if they get Superman wrong, every Marvel, every DC movie following is going to be wrong. I did see the first Superman, uh, the first Wonder Woman movie, because all my friends were like, let's go see it. And I didn't want to be the jerk who was like, I'm not. And I did like the first Wonder Woman movie, but that's it. Man of Steel, when, once once they, they had uh, Superman's father telling Superman, oh, no, you shouldn't have saved those kids on the bus. Oh, you know, yeah, that's where they messed up. Pa, pa Kent would have said, you saved the kid's life. We'll deal with the consequences later. You did the right thing. You know, so I... I'm done. I, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen the Flash. I haven't seen Batman versus Superman. Justice League. I'm not interested. If you fundamentally get Superman wrong, I, I did see the Batman movies. I yeah, think I'm hopeful. Gunn's gonna get Superman right. I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm hopeful. Batman. You know, I wanted superheroes appearing in, right place in that movie. It, maybe, but there's like so many heroes scheduled to appear in that Superman movie. I'm worried. Uh, that's, that's what, what I'm worried about. That's Superman. a red flag, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a red yeah. flag. I, I, I don't want to watch these movies, John. A lot I'm of times, I, I don't want to watch these movies. A lot of times, like like you, I'm like, oh, I don't. I want to skip that. I want to skip the Marvels, but because of what we do on the channel and we talk about these things, I feel I have to watch them in order to give I, I a proper critique. That. You see, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm. Uh, I, uh, I remember picking up issue six of the Century while on schoolies, the Aussie version of Spring Break. I went back to our cabaret while Matra chasing girls. Very wise choice. <laughs> was it a wise choice to chase the girls or to read the comic? I, I, I'm a little confused. It depends. Did they catch the girls? Right. They what did the girls them? look like? Show me a picture of the girls. Maybe maybe you made the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'll, I'll I'm gonna start I'm gonna start a a, a a a flame war of hatred against me. I I didn't like I didn't like uh, the Michael Keaton Batman movies because that wasn't Batman. Batman doesn't drive an armored car into the factory and drop a bomb and blow up the building. Oh, you're not. None of those guys died. What are you talking about? <laughs> Machine guns don't come out of the Batmobile. You know, 
Or shoot rubber bullets. The arrows are okay. Batman doesn't stand there and take bullets to the chest and bounce off. He's not Iron, Iron Man, you know. In in my mind, the, the Nolan films are the closest to Batman, but they still have never made a, a Batman movie. Uh, the guys all got herpes that summer. Straight beans. Oh, were you made the right choice. You made the right choice. No, Finbar's just making that up. Oh, okay. That's gonna happen. Okay. But what, what, right, what, what are you saying about movies? Like in, in my channel, I do. I I haven't been doing it lately because uh. I've been doing a lot of live chats and I've been helping people promote because I, I, first off, I think it's important. Second off, I think it's fun, but uh, I only showcase comics that I like. I got no time to talk about comics that I don't like, you know? So it, you, you'll note some comics that have never been on my channel and never will, but like, I, I like comics. I, I you know, I, why well, talk ho about hopefully our, our, our comic ends up on. Oh yeah. Channel. If it, you know, if it does it, we'll, we'll, we'll know why. Like, damn, somebody, I, like it. I, I don't want to tell Terry, Tell stories after school, but somebody said, uh, "Are you gonna like? No, are, do you think Frog Tony's comic will be good?" And at the time, I didn't know who you are, so I was just like, "Yeah, I hope it's good." What? Why? What? Why would I want somebody to put out a bad comic? And people looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, "I don't know who Frog Tony is. I don't know if he's starting trouble. I don't know if he's a good guy. I don't know anything about him." But why I'll do? We, why do we? Yeah, why do we root for a bad comic? What? What? How does that help anybody? You know. Yeah, I want Gail Simone's gonna write the X Men. I hope it's good. You know, I'm not gonna break. I'm not gonna buy it because I'm. You know, I broke up with Marvel, and I don't go back out with girls that I broke up with. The uh, Great Schoolies outbreak of two. Oh, I remember that. That was a. Is is wasn't that a a Mags Rivera comic? Oof. A Mags Visaggio. Mags, what did I say? Mags Rivera. Oh, I I got I got the one who did America Chavez and and Mags Visaggio mixed up. Same person. Both write bad comics. <laughs> uh, all right well, we've been here two and a half hours john i don't oh, wow. want to keep you all day uh, well we we haven't we oh, we're talking have. comics and the time flew by i, I hope i yeah. hope i was fun yeah big fun um we'll probably have you come back uh yeah sure after I'd love you're to. Huge, hugely successful when you're you know driving your rolls royce and uh, talking about your comic uh, i'll tell you this i'm not a car guy i'll stick with my i'll stick with my ford fiesta you know I'm not a car guy. I don't know nothing about cars. I just said Rolls Royce because I think that was a, a very expensive car. Yeah, that's, no that's, idea. That, it's a classy it's car. Thing to come in mind. Yeah, yeah, it, it's the first thing that came to mind. I was just like, if, if uh, money was no object, yes, a Rolls Royce. I love that that classic old school look, you know. But yeah, and but if money is an object, a Ford Fiesta is fine for me. I'd rather I'd rather spend the money on comics, and I don't see GC my comics. Everybody, I'm I'm trying to start problems. I'm trying to call. Once you see GC a comic, it's no longer a comic book. I just read you want comics. people to read your comics. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, see, I, I'm a, a I'm the kind of person that uh, I'm a reader of comics. That's why I asked you if you uh, read or collect because yeah. I don't buy any comics that I don't intend to read. So I don't. Absolutely. I could pick up these 100%. like, oh, these are expensive, you know. But I'm like, ah, for what? I don't. I don't feel that there's any value for me to go look. I got Amazing Spider-Man number one. Like, okay, that's not a big deal to me. But for you to go look at all these comics I read and enjoyed, I go, that's a fucking big deal, right? Oh, if I could plug some um, on my channel, every Sunday I take out a, what I consider to be an important comic and I talk about it. A couple, couple, of, maybe two months ago, I took out my copy of Fantastic Four One, and people in the chat's like, "You're touching that?" I'm like, "It's a comic book; it's supposed to be read." And a lot of people were like, "Wow, I've never seen the ads. I've never, you know, I've never seen the insides. They never saw the true colors of the comic because every time it's reprinted, they redo the colors." So I showed off my X Men number one. Showed off my Fantastic Four number one. This Sunday, to, uh, I'm doing Love and Rockets number one. You know, because John, John's I'm, kids are just raging in the background. No, my investment, Dad, stop! I got no, I got no kids. So anybody, anybody, be nice to me. You could be my will. My, <laughs> my, my brothers, <laughs> but you know, they're, they're all like, oh, "How much is your comic book worth?" Nothing to you. Nothing to you. Yeah, you know, I, I make sure my wife the comic. I'm sorry. I, I so they're talking. like, we watched your channel. You touched the comics. They're not worth anything anymore. You know, so I don't know. Comic books are meant to be read. I accidentally, I, I bought a copy of uh, Avengers number four and I didn't realize it was CG seed. And this is before I had my channel. If I had my channel, I would have opened it up in front of everybody live on screen. So, oh, yeah. and people would have freaked out. <laughs> yeah. So my Avengers, my Avengers four was CG seed. 8.5 and I opened it up it's 
it begged and boarded it's in my general population with all my other comics <laughs> i love how you call it general population. this is my gen pop yeah. yeah it's the warden of comics everybody uh john's long box thank you for coming uh, thank you for uh oh thank you comics, yeah, talking comics with us yeah, I, I like talking comics i wish there was more people that actually uh wanted to talk just absolutely comics. that's why i've been every time i tweet i say it's about comics it's about it's you know I do like the comic book creators. Don't get me wrong. And yeah, my channel is, that's what it's about. I talk to comic book creators, but it's its about comics. You know, I, I, I don't care that this guy doesn't like this guy. I don't care that that girl doesn't like this guy. I, 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 I like comics, you know, and, and if you don't get along with somebody that I get along with, I don't care. I'm an adult. You know, I work in construction. This, this guy matter. Yeah. And, 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 and this guy's got power tools and that guy's got a power. Sir, and we managed to get the job done. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 you know it's it, then we have a beer afterward and we don't have right, to worry. Right. yeah thank you for sacred sandwich for saying this guy's great i i hope you talk about me i if i may be so arrogant thank you Please. i yeah. i just you know and i i feel that uh if i may get maudlin and philosophical i think we're losing our way in in, in comics gate you know it's becoming uh fractions of personalities rather than love of comics the uniting thing used to be a love of comics you know, and now, now it's, you know, I love this guy, which is fine. And I love that guy, but, uh, don't forget it's about comics. I don't know that I, I'm, I'm getting maudlin and I'm tired. I'm not, I'm usually in bed by four, four hours by this point. One of John's copies of Robin walking around Jen Poppins and handing a copy of Batman's pocket. <laughs> Holding that pocket. All right, John, thank you uh, for being here again. Uh, Pick Thank up, you uh, when his I, I really ready. enjoyed actually talking about comics. That was fun. I mean, we I, I did my little uh, sell, which I'm very uncomfortable selling myself. I'm not that good. Uh, but you I should really be April 26. Guys, April 26. I want to see you April 26. Well, you're we so good. guys to back this comic. Great. Yeah. They raise, tales, a raise, a, raise a horror tales pint glass. Hmm. <laughs> you can get them. You can get them on April 26. Thanks a lot, guys. I really, I really appreciate you having me on. This, this is fun. Thank you for the chat. You're saying some nice things. I appreciate it. Um, Michael Bancroft said he 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 will host my launch party on uh, nine o'clock on uh, 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 April 26th. I'm, I'm all of a sudden I got real tired and it's getting difficult for me to talk. So thanks a lot, everybody. And we look forward Thank to you. it. All right, everybody. Follow me around all night. Thank you, Mac. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. As always, love, peace, booty grease. We're out there. And it's